the forge has gone quiet, the bellows blow no more. The forge has gone quiet, the smiths have gone home. Only fading embers remain, and my hearth grows cold. One kiss from you to rekindle it all. Anybody? Before I put them away? I'm good. Thank you. Would you like any more chips, I said? There is nacho cheese over here. Civic too. services for everyone. <laughs> Civic services. Will they trap them in the subways or the <laughs> sewers? Do they trap Sidewalk. them in the sewers? Sidewalk services online and very cool. So they trapped the cops in the sewer. So maybe that's why everything was so clean. They just had constant sewer service. Just cleaning everything. Just made the Dumped out of the river. Yeah. 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 Who was picking up this garbage? Killer Croc. Yes. Killer Croc is <laughs> not eating the garbage. <laughs> I'm driving this tank around to pick up the trash. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Wayne. The other thing is, what, what, what did he say when he blew up the fucking when he blew up the thing above them? He's like, "Get into your armory." Well, apparently for trash pickup. Now you know. I'm just imagining Bane yelling at you for not splitting or recycling. <laughs> you can't <laughs> recycle that. <Right. laughs> Glass and plastic must be separated. <laughs> <laughs> well, luckily, we made you. Uh, luckily, in those days, you right? couldn't understand what the fuck he was saying anyway. It's like <laughs> the sound. Of it. He's just trying to make sure you rinse out your bottles before you go into the recycling. Come on. That's a type two plastic. No. Cap the <laughs> oh, I was dreaming. <laughs> 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 this paper's been coated. You can't recycle oh. it. Oh no. shit! Oh hurt. my god! <laughs> hurt. He's just the environmental warrior. I mean, the, yeah. <laughs> the the plastics and glass good. must be separated. <laughs> Babe's New York. <laughs> Make sure all additional food scraps go into the compost. <laughs> <laughs> food scraps go into the compost, oh, Mr. Wayne. <laughs> That's what they did with the football stadium. They blew it up. It just turned they, it into a. They blew it up. That's right. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Right. Oh my God! <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Who was the the trash trash right? Well, I think we got our outtake for this episode. <laughs> <laughs> was it recording? Yeah. Are we recording? Fans. Oh my God! <laughs> uh. Oh, uh. you almost killed it. Coconut pulp going down. <laughs> <laughs> <throat. laughs> oh, man, yeah. You merely adopted the coconut pulp. Yeah. I, I was, I was born into it. it. <laughs> I was bringing it into my lungs, I guess. I was born in a family that drank only soy milk. <laughs> Do you know what happens to your body when you have a lack like of fiber? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> yeah. Okay, so okay, so we're doing a countdown here. <laughs> okay, I gotta I gotta get my shit together here. <laughs> um Okay. So Uh, welcome back <laughs> to. I'm still laughing. <laughs> no, welcome back to Queen of Embers. Um, uh, I'm your game master, Daniel Fox. You know these people around the table, the players, the playtesters, the cultists, the people who made Swine Hunter and Mongosh, and the new player's handbook in December. Woo hoo! Amazing. Yeah, yeah. Um, by the way, uh, you're probably hearing this far long after the fact, but we're now Twitch partners. Yeah. Because we're fucking awesome. Oh damn, that's old news. Oh, I know. <laughs> that's old. <laughs> news. And the exciting, the other exciting thing too is we're now a roll twenty spotlight partner. So that means we're going to do a character mancer on roll twenty. Basically, you can create characters online. Uh, we're working on that now. We'll have a fully baked in compendium, so you can search the rules and stuff and use them for roll twenty. Which also means that uh, Matt Jowett uh, on our Grim and Perilous Gaming Twitch channel will be using Roll20 exclusively because they are now our sponsor. So Ooh. thank you, Roll20. Yay. And thank Thanks, you, Roll fans, 20. for helping us get there. Um, obviously, Sirenscape is also a sponsor of Grim and Perilous Gaming, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, we haven't yet scored Mountain Dew as a big sponsor, but you know, eventually, who knows what happens, right? Dude, so, if I had known that, I brought <laughs> all the Mountain Dew I just bought. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I think it's Pepsi. Mountain Dew, we're looking for sponsorship. So uh, let's just jump right into Queen of Embers. Um, so 
it has been about three weeks since we've played. So I think we should maybe do a little bit of remedial storytelling because we obviously have been away from vacation, for work, a lot. Where we last left off, though, we left off right before the party. You had committed a series of investigations and began kind of narrowing down, narrowing down, your list of suspects. <laughs> and we we so kind of made some it. just arbitrary decisions at some point. That's right. Like, it, yeah. Like, you can't watch everyone, so... It, it just, we're hedging our bets. We're, we were like, right. it's pretty likely it's not this person. Well, how about Hopefully we do this? <laughs> how about we start first with those uh, names that are not suspect and talk about who they are above board. So, Mike, I'm going to hand them to you. Okay. Oh, those are the not suspects? That's right. The suspects are turned the other way. Actually, you can do this. Yeah. There you go. All right. So what if we hedge our bets wrong, guys? <laughs> and then everyone well, dies. What are we talking about in character? Then uh, okay. the war starts. Okay. Yeah. The war is over! I'm just kidding. Uh, so I think we first. Anarchy. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. We got Sir Genity Cooper. Copper. Copper. Who's Genity Copper? Y'all listen to this. He is the brother. <clears throat> the brother of uh, the. <clears throat> Wolfgang. Wolfgang. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, yeah, he's Wolfgang's Wolf brother. brother yeah. And also brother, yeah, the brother of the, of the uh, Duchess. Ba- Duchess? Baroness? Baroness? Mm. Is she called a Baroness? Chickas? Because uh, he, he's a, a Baron by Gabriel. title. Oh, okay. so, yeah, yeah, Baron. So, so the party you're going to is Lord Clayton Arcade the Lesser. His wife is Lady Gabriella, but, who you'll talk about, but she but is not is, yet a Baron. He, oh, oh, he's not yet he's not the officially Baron. Yet this officially is to Baron. create his Baron. Potentially, yes. Yeah. Potentially. Got it. Is, Got it. Is. So we decided it wasn't him because we didn't think that he would kill someone in a dishonorable manner. Is that correct? Because we remember, you're investi- Remember, right. if you remember why you came to Kael Tyrion was to bring Rosalia Mansfield, the barrister, to mm-hmm. meet with Lord Clayton R.K. at the party to sign some document that will, that will prescribe his fealty to Baroness Madeline Dupre's side so she can fully secede Durendal from Agladore. Well, no, this is like the great snowball going down the mountainside. We've really just had layer upon layer added to it. That's right. To- <laughs> That's right. Let's keep going. Yeah. Uh, so then we have Josephine Booker. Who Jonathan Banner knows. <clears throat> yeah. Um, we had a discussion about her. She's like a, a, a reaching socialite. I don't remember what her connection to the RK is, though. She was uh, Friends. smug and irritating. Yeah, it just felt like she was just a social climber, from what I recall. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and was she a suspect? She was a social hanger-on, right? Basically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't think she, w- I don't think she was. Uh, I think, uh, although I do think Harper argued adamantly against it, because she's in the lore night. Mm-hmm. And he always suspects. That's all right, and you, gain, and you gain, and you gain, and you gain corruption for that. for that, right? Yeah, for racism. Yeah, it's not well, racism. It's not it's race. it's, I don't know what it's is it's a, well, it's a Jobism. It's a Lorenite. It's probably just it's probably careerism. True. Right. There's an ism somewhere in there. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, the next person was R. H. Block, financial man. We knew nothing about him. Yeah. Yeah. No I mean, one investigated him at all. <laughs> he's a tax man. He's a tax man. But he's a tax man for the king, right? <laughs> he's a tax man for Kael Tyrion. Therefore, he's a tax man for the king. Are we all subjects of the king? Not so anybody at this table besides me. <laughs> Not anymore! <laughs> yep. Uh, next. Did not sign your damn paper. <laughs> I signed. Uh, Lord Clayton R.K. the Younger? It's his party. He's the one. He's probably not going to kill himself. I mean, it could we, be. We eliminated him for the simple fact that we don't think it's going to be. We're going to be watching him anyway, so. <laughs> I mean, and simply, we have to watch him the entire time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie, that would be one hell of a twist, though, if it was suicide. Just. Ha ha! I killed mean, <laughs> myself! Is he wearing blue? Oh, the plot twist! Oh, we gotta stop him. Right? Yeah. <laughs> He's wearing blue now. It was the end of the Golgo 13. Uh, oh, God. The end of the, where, like, the dude paid oh, yes. to kill himself. Oh, yes. He was a sleeper agent. He killed himself. He didn't even know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we have Wolfgang Cooper and Harung Bigley. It's C O P P E R. It's co- co- Copper. Copper. It's okay. So it's this one has two O's, and this one has one O. Well, it looks like I may have misspelled. Well, so it is a copper. Cooper and a it's copper. Copper. Right? copper is a is a very historical name in the game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, it's been in the playlist for like decades, Mike. Yeah, uh, Manny. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thanks for that one. <laughs> Anywho, uh, Wolfgang's got the clap, and her own Bigley, I don't think she'd kill him. She seems pretty loyal to the uh, cause. I would say so that far, I mean, on the trip with us the entire time, and. They technically weren't even on our list. Yeah, Suspects. I, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah we're not going to put anybody that's in our party on the list. I right. didn't think that, that that was already a, a toss Given? Yeah. yeah. Uh, we it's have, obviously the bummer, though. It's, it's obviously. <laughs> uh, Oliver Ramsey, the cook or chef. That was a chef, and we went there. Remember, he was obsessed with his food, the yeah. quality of it. Mm-hmm. It would ruin him. And he's not like a he's not like a burger. He's not like a, an aristocrat. Like he's he's a self made man. Yeah, this would ruin his name if it, it, would, it was him. Yeah, he would, he would not. He would never be able to, to cook again. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so we're we're a hundred percent sure it's yes. not him. Now that doesn't mean that his food won't be used. True. <clears throat> but I I really have a feeling that whatever goes on that kitchen in and on in that kitchen he will know about. Yeah, yeah. Because he remember he was he watched everything. Mm-hmm. Okay, sorry. Well, we'll keep going. <laughs> Is that? Vetti co- better co-main? Oh, that's co-main. better co-main. So I think that's... Eddie, Eddie better. May, maybe you, Tim, should talk Eddie about this, because you're the one who had the interaction with better co-main in the upper city. This is Eddie Vetter and uh, Cobain's child. Tell <laughs> us um, about better Cobain. Which one? He's not the... Uh, he's he's the, the guy that was always performing. He's the guy with the loot. Oh, he's the lord of delegate. Oh, oh just, he's just a... He's just Bel- a well, yeah. He's Lutist. just a performer. He's the bard of Belagain. Yeah, the baritone it's, of Belagain. It's another baritone one of those things where like his he's such a narcissist that the only thing he cares about is like is his performances. But I don't think there's anything there. I think we all decided that basically he's well, like you were there too, right? He's like you, you want my signature, and I'm like, no, <laughs> no we don't even know who he's you like, are. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sure. He still gave you. Yeah, he still gave it to you. <laughs> yeah. There's not a lot going on up there. and But maybe that's the act. Dun, 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 dun. Sorry. Yeah, we're throwing <laughs> him out. Yeah. Just vain. Dirge the Younger. I believe he's like a serviceman of the, the Baron. Or he's his man at arms. He's his man at arms. Mm-hmm. Who I still think is in with the <clears throat> in with the wife. But that's, that's got nothing to do with me. That was just a... And aside. Say your Social truth, Sam. Say your truth. That was just because it's, it, it felt very clue-like. I see. <laughs> yeah, Dirge the Younger, if you recall, has a deep connection to the Duprays. A very deep historic connection to the Duprays. That's why I don't trust him. Mm-hmm. He was uh, he was the, if I'm not mistaken, who was the Manning Dupre? He was Manning Dupre's master. Uh, Manning. <coughs> Manning. Manning, that's right. Many, 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 many campaigns ago. Uh, yeah. This would have been almost Anybody probably 15 Manning. years ago in the world. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but he's an older gentleman, yes, and he's now in the service of Lord Clayton R.K., who is also at one point in service to the Dupre. But, you know, as families do in Aglador, they separate and reform. And, yeah. Manning, Manning. So that is Dirge the Younger. That's right. <laughs> Uh, then we got Tobias Stro. That's right. Is that the ice cream dude? No. Oh. No, the next guy. Is the, the that's ice cream the river dude. barge. Oh. Yeah. That's the gangster again, river barge guy, right? Yeah, which was once again he's. Um, we I think we ruled him out because it would ruin his reputation and his uh, career. Wasn't he a pickle man? Yeah, and he likes pickles. He's a new pickle man. He's, he's trying to go legit, all right? He's trying to go legit. That's right. He's he's a, he's a, and his daughter is trying to stay as dirty as she can. <laughs> <laughs> so Tobias Stroh, he runs river, river barges between Old Lork and Rowling. So Cal Tyrion's kind of like a middle, middle is the middle mm-hmm. stop. The middle passage. Isn't it, is his daughter in the stack of names? Yeah. Okay, yeah. sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry Domina, yeah. We might get there. Uh, the next one is... Uh, Hagen Hassel Nuss. You, you just came back from Hungary, so you should be able to pronounce this. Oh, I didn't like, speak any. Hungarian. Uh, I didn't speak Hagen any. Hagen. So, who is Hagen Hassel Nuss? <laughs> that guy. The Ice King. That's the guy who's trying he to make ice makes, cream. He makes famous. cream dice. He makes cream dice. Cream dice. With different different flavors. Which ain't nice natural. Too. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but it was delicious. There was like a 20 minute conversation about the, the different flavors. There was. <laughs> 
He was very excited about his cream <laughs> dice that he bring to the party. <laughs> See, yeah, it was like a bubblegum moment there with the ice cream for a bit. <laughs> I'm not saying I ate a lot of uh, ice cream slash, uh, you know, cream frozen dice. cream dice. Yeah, and when I was in Europe, but I did. <laughs> Yum. There's a lot. Watched Glad you didn't eat pizza too. I did eat. Watch people eat, eat pizza. Yeah. Cool. Watched people eat pizza. I was asked what is the, the proper way to eat a pizza, and I was like, well, hold up, guys, I'm in Florence. Let me just stalk people, figure out how they eat pizza, and then I will report back. They fold just, it? Just eat it like an American. Well, some people fold it. Some people eat, start with the crust side. Some people go with the middle. Crust. What is this? all about folding. What is yeah. this, 90s stuffed crust yeah. pizza? Yeah. So, <laughs> Hagen, Hagen news. So that's so that, ice cream. So those people are not on, those people are not your suspects. Right. I so think it's the think arms. Who are the, let's talk about the suspects. Let's get into it. Well, there's Hey There Delilah. Uh, which was the daughter. Okay. No, no, Delilah's the dancer that we didn't talk about. Oh, Delilah's the dancer? We just don't know. We don't know. We don't know anything uh, about her. <clears throat> she she is the unknown factor. No one met her. Which is what kind of a lot of these people are. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like the finance guy. The tax man. Come the tax man. Wee, ba 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 well, I was trying to do the Beatles song. I don't know where uh, you went. I was thinking, I was thinking the, uh, was scat the Scat Man. man. I went over there with Taylor the Delilah. Irish, Irish block. Come on. That's okay. what I had in my head. <laughs> Except for I had the one guy that sings it on YouTube that I'm not going to try to. Oh, <laughs> that's the guy I have to in my head for. So, so Delilah is on the list because she's an unknown at this point. I'm right. Saying. Okay. Who else do you have? Uh, Kinnison Algiers. Who is Kinnison Algiers? He's the butler. It's obviously him. Yeah, yeah. yeah if there's a doctor, we know it. It's doctor. exactly. He's definitely the doctor. So Kinnison Algiers is the butler? Quartermaster. He's the quarter quarter master. Master. He also has an interesting past, too, if you recall. He was at the sack of Hastings. Really? He's a Genevieve man. He was a peacemaker. That's He's right. a Genevieve man? In mm-hmm. the service of an RK. Times have changed. How many years is it? I think that's, that's why he stayed on the team. Fifteen or so? Yeah. No. That's <laughs> our man. It's Algiers! It's Algiers! Yeah, he, uh, he's the one who brokered the peace uh, at the sack of Hastings between the Genevieve and the Dupre. Uh, he also has another intriguing bit of background related to the Cassandra the Unifier that you all probably don't remember. But um, I'll encourage you to find it on the wiki later. Oh, is this the man? Oh no, that's that's the guy who's with us. That's Captain, oh Captain. Captain, my Captain. Uh, he lost his eye. Or his hand, or whatever. Isn't he a squire? Okay. Uh, he has a close relationship to Lynn Jenny the First. That's his father. Yeah, okay. And then we have. Not the lesser. The Lady Gabriella Arquette. Okay. Yeah, Lady Gabriella Arquet. Definitely, it's the, her. She's the wife of the of the Lord Clayton Arquet. What do we know about her she, from your perspective? She cuts Lisa? him. Oh, oh um, she's Wolfgang's sister. She gets drunk and likes to insult people, and she hates the Baroness. That's what I bet. Mm-hmm. That sounds about right. Mm-hmm. And then we have Armani Warhol, mm. artist. Artist, but we don't know anything about him, right? We know he's gonna wear blue. Yes. <laughs> but we we also why is blue relevant? We, it was one of the from, blues. One of the one of the informants had, had told us that <laughs> blue would be the color of the assassin, which the is actually a very popular. popular. So everybody's gonna be wearing blue because it's fall. Which First day of autumn. Autumnal equinox. <laughs> we discovered this last game session. <laughs> we messed up the. It's the first day of winter. <clears throat> Oh, it's the first day of winter. Yes. Oh. And we and we established that killing every suspect is not an option. Yeah. So who's your other suspect? <laughs> this is not D and D, all right. right? Who's your other suspect? Domina Satine. Wait, wait, no. Tell us about her. She's gonna wear blue too. She's gonna wear blue. So that's why she's. Uh, she's the gangster's daughter. She's the daughter of the gangster who's trying to go legit, but she is definitely not trying to go legit. She's part of the what? Velvet Throne. Velvet Throne. She's she a gangster girl. Is she too legit to quit? Too legit. Could be. 
So I'm gonna say that's everyone. On, so who else is on the guest list that we didn't cover? Elisa, you want to go through our list real quick, just to double check us. That's everybody. Okay. That is literally. other than the three household, the nine servant, the six kitchen, and the seven of us. That's right. Yeah, we kicked out all the servants, right? They've all been in service for a long time. Uh, have done no investigation of, the, of that point, no. But you did get a list of how many people would be there. Uh, mm -hmm. You know that there will be a total of... 39. 39! Um, <laughs> there is, in the, at the party completely, there will be uh, nine total domestics. There will be six guards. And then the rest of the list. So we, we're supposed to have a little bit of time before the party starts. Will we have a chance to ask you, if anybody's been new to service? So the where we left off, if, I'm, if I recall, was right in the, the morning of the party, which they're going to begin receiving. They're going to begin receiving people who are not guests by four, and then guests will begin to arrive at, I believe... Let me double check this. Yeah. Guests will begin to arrive at 6 p.m. on the nose. So you may enter the grounds at 4. Okay. Wake up, you blockhead! Sammy says, trying to rouse... <clears throat> rouse you from your sleep. Mm. Warren, Warren gets up out of bed. Wipes his eyes. It's time already, huh? All right. He starts to get dressed. Yep. So this is like the party is starting. Tonight. It's starting tonight. Okay. That's right. And if you recall, you will also be presenting a lavish gift to Lord Clayton R.K. And I believe that Jonathan Vander was the one who was selected to be the one to present it to the court. <laughs> I don't remind me of your character's name, sorry. Terwin. Terwin, that's right. He's on a tear. Do we need to do this? Or you no, we're good. Games? Okay. Alright. It begins up. So, so you wake up that morning in the Terwin. on the dock on the docks. Um, at this point. <clears throat> morning trades beginning to become set up along the lower <clears throat> Already you're here. Hmm? Along Riverside, and you can see the two massive bluffs rising above you where the upper city of Kale Tyrion is. But down here, the city is, is awash in light as the sun is rising in the east above the distant western wheel of the forest. <clears throat> Quite a bit of a buzz of activity, obviously. It is uh, the first, it is now the winter solstice, it's the first day of winter today. It is the celebration, of course, the passing of autumn to winter. When you began this foray, it was in early autumn, the season has changed. As you have been amid your investigations. So, his entire is mid autumn, I believe, when you started. But now it is the first day of winter, so sometime around, you guess, November ish. October ish. The trees, leaves have mostly changed color and have already fallen. None of them are bare of leaf quite yet, as there's several, you know, there's a lot of coniferous trees throughout here, tall, sweeping pine trees that shake and shamble in the wind. Um, but uh, for the most part, Kiel Tyrion is just a wash in activity, as clearly there is a celebration today. And that activity is not necessarily to work, it is a, it is a holly day, a holy day, if you will, where uh, you can already see that people are beginning to stumble into local watering holes, uh, where the streets are festooned uh, with paper lanterns that are not yet lit. Men, women, and children are already gathering amid the docks and the riverside to 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 uh, give praise to the passing of the season, to praise the uh, to praise the martyr, and to welcome this to welcome the custodian before the winter falls upon Aridane soil. Down here, it's all Romanians, a proud stoic folk. Yeah, because they've been partying for like days now, right? Leading up to it, yeah, but now it's the official holy day. It's like uh, they've been partying for three days before and a few days after. It's like a week celebration. A right. long one. 
they're already building out, you can see along the side of the river, they're already building these um, straw men that they're going to burn for the evening along the river. You imagine there will be quite a celebration in the city. It will be difficult to get any services here, save for food and drink. <clears throat> but we won't be in the city anyway, right? You'll be up above in Keltirian uh, proper, in the upper city. <clears throat> <clears throat> is the um, barrister going to meet us down here or are we going to meet up there because isn't there that uh, house the Dupre house pavilion there is there's Dupre pavilion is in the upper city that's right so we're going to meet her there or are we going to we gonna make any plans well her? at this point she said that she plans to she plans to arrive at the uh, at Clayton Arcade's Manor uh, around um, six, ten or so. In fact, um, she's meeting Sammy Newhouse and Wolfgang Copper at the Dupre Pavilion uh, before that. So she's going to show up fashionably late. Got it. Well, there's probably a, a line. Six p.m. Yeah. is when the guests begin to arrive. Yeah, you know so that. So she's probably told to be there at a certain time to be announced. And we are to be there early. Right. Four. So, mm -hmm. so, so well, we talked about this a little bit here. I'm sorry about that. I don't know what I was saying. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> and we talked about this. Do we know if there's any new, I mean, just not to put any more suspects out there, but do we know if there's any new hmm. servants? Men or women that have been brought into their service? Is it something we should think about? Oh, I mean, yeah. Should we, should we, I mean, <clears throat> I mean, uh, I know the genteel kill each other, but I'm pretty sure any of you would like to take a whack at me, so, I mean, it's, you know. Nah, if I did, I'd do it. Way to go. That's what I'm saying. I mean, it would be an easy way to put somebody into their service months in advance, right? Yeah, and then you, you promise them something like, if you succeed, you'll be taken care of for the rest of your days. Or we don't kill your wife and child. If, if you don't, we'll take care of your family for the rest of your days. And then afterwards they kill you no matter what. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, but that's what you tell them. Maybe, I don't know. I mean, it's just a thought. I don't I mean, It's hard for me to get into your minds. Well, you see, it's something they've tried to say to me family a lot. And that's why we make sure that we married young. That way we have heirs, well, what you would think of as heirs, just someone else to fight when we're dead. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Yes, it was just a thought, I mean, uh, I don't know. I don't know, again, this is... It seems to be a lot of people to track no matter what, so I might just be adding to our book. It's definitely possible, but unless you're going to sprout quite a few more pairs of eyes, I don't see how. So, so what is our plan? I mean, obviously Domino is yours, right? Domino. Domino. Uh, unfortunately... Oh. Is our peril healed? Yes, so you're restored to unhindered. Unfortunately, I think we're going to both be with uh, Domino, because she seemed to be... Fancy you. Uh, or at least she wants me to think she fancies me. <coughs> Did she not give you blue gloves? Oh yeah, she gave me blue gloves and told me to wear blue. Robin's she, egg blue. <laughs> she wanted to be on my arm the whole night. I'm betting that's not the only blue thing she gave you. No. I mean, yes. <laughs> <laughs> So for now. <laughs> <laughs> so who will take Lady Arcade? Well. You uh I know her, you know you do know the sycophant that hangs upon her skirts. I'm not certain that the uh, person you refer to knows her that well, so I'm not certain that that uh, pays me any value. The thing about Angerons is that 
compare that no matter what. Yeah. That's, that is true. It will, it will at least put you close enough to her. Maybe. It depends on how much of her uh, experience and uh, close, friendly ties were uh, unfounded boasts, let's say. Well, in my general experience with that, finding out information. You don't necessarily have to find it out from the face. Sometimes from the back works as well. Yeah. Proximity is sometimes as good as up close. I <laughs> guess what I'm implying is I'm not sure that she is as proximus as perhaps she claims. We'll see. I think she'll try to be. Which is an yeah. okay place for you to be. Yeah. I think there's going to be a good possibility that I will end up mired in a, uh, a soup of gossip, but... Perhaps we can be able to uh, separate fact from fiction as we pick through it with our hands. Good, good morrow, everyone. Rosalia Mansfield walks stately with a with a perfect posture, her arms folded into her robes like such, down the dock toward the Madeline, where you're now standing near the gangplanks, talking with uh, Sammy. You've all kind of roused from your sleep and clean yourselves up. I trust you slept well, she, she inquires. Well enough. Today is the day, she says. Tonight is the night. Indeed. Yes, we were just planning. Yes. Is there anything we can do for you, lady? Well, I have uh, just a few hours before I need to make other preparations. I have to draft some documents this day uh, to ensure that uh, Clayton Arquet's seal is unbreakable. Uh, however, I have a few hours before that, and I thought I may come and speak with you all and help answer any questions you may have before we go. I know it's rather short notice since we've arrived, and this has not been the most ideal of situations, but no less, I've, I've come to at least to ensure you that, uh, that you have my fealty in this, and that your and that your assistance in this will not go unnoticed by the Baroness, that I assure you of. Her grace will ward each of you appropriately, should this go through. And it should. I have everybody confidence that it shall. The Dufresne are trustworthy, loyal. Yes. Would you not agree? She says. We have very little time to do what we, uh, you've asked us to do. Mm. And we've not interviewed a lot of... Not, we, we've had to move people up this list just for... Assumptions. Lack no. of any information, really. So I am sorry for that. That's that is that is our greatest problem right now. So I think we need time to <clears throat> divide these people up between us. And my lady, is there something? Do you know any of these people? If not, then well, I think it's papers and us back to planning. It depends on who you're talking about. Um, any of them. Any of them. Anything that you can tell us. Well, well. Go ahead. I was thinking about keeping an eye on this uh, Kinnison Algiers. Oh yes, she says. Kinnison Algiers. I can tell you a tale or two of him. He's a Jenny man from my understanding? He... I wouldn't call him a Jenny. However, there's no doubt that he and Baron Lynn Genevieve the Younger's father and he were fast friends. In fact... They were the ones to hide away the twins uh, during the strife. Hmm. Cecilia uh, and our Same king. Uh, he has a, a deep history with both houses, both Dupre and the Genevieve. It is no surprise to find, I suppose, that Kinnison Algiers would end up in Lord Arkay's court. After all, Arkay, his father at least, was a servant as well to Lord Dupre many, many years ago. No less Algiers as a... But not since... There was quite a bit of strife between the Arkays and... Again, this Dupre is many years ago. The only surviving Dupre is Madeline, that she has no natural-born children. Those old grievances were settled at the end of the sword. Baron Linda Genevieve the Younger saw to that, as did his house. Dupre 
In their former glory are no more. Now all that remains is Madeline the Baroness. Kenneth and Algiers, however, I do not <clears throat> think him to be a disloyal man. There's one thing you can count on for people who are like him, is that they will they will they will pledge their fealty to, to whom is right who will pay you that money. Mercenaries of the pen, I suppose you could say. Hmm. So, so my question is, is he helped save the queen? He did. Wouldn't his loyalties lie there instead of to this baron? <sighs> or this up jump baron? Mm-hmm. There seems to be a lot of the people up jumping into the barony, but into their it's, own baronies. But. It's an excellent question, and I'm afraid the answer is a bit more complex. If only because Cassander Malister know that the king, she corrects herself, know that the king uh, is not Rovanian. He is Aridane, blood of blue blooded, in fact. The Malisters uh, were, were blue bloods who came to the east along with the, the Duke Vans Dondonthorn, God rest his soul. They were squires to the Dondonthorns. Now, what that has to do with today's situation, I don't know, but I can tell you this, Algiers is a, he cares not for whether one is Aridane or Rovanian, he simply is playing his part. His loyalty is the coin. Yes, and uh, Lord Clayton R.K. is the most influential man in Kael Tyrion, save for the Allure Knights. So would you say we'd be wasting our time if we kept an eye on him? Well, I don't know how you could even eye him at all. He is probably in a fluster trying to prepare the house for the guests this evening. I this mean, during party, the party, per se. Well, I suspect that he will be rather busy during that as well. He will be the one attending to the household, to the movement of the, to the to the movements within the party when dinner is served and then when the masks go on when guests are announced where coats go what groomsmen and servants uh, you know see to the guests where to direct those to the water closet he will see to the stable hands he will have many great responsibilities during this time uh, he will be the uh, I suppose the man behind the curtain well Claude Clayton R.K. will see to entertaining his guests while the work downstairs, so to speak, uh, will be at the hand of Kenneth and Algiers, and his hands will be on every lever. Well, in that case, then, I mean, he could have a servant do it. Without, him, without, without them even knowing, I think, is what he's trying to say. Master Algiers is classically trained and incredibly efficient. He knows everyone by name. To introduce new face among his company at such a late hour I'm sure would cause him much distress but I can inquire if that's what you wish to do I make no promises but know that Kenneth and Algiers is a man who is uh, every corner must be perfect every fold of napkin must blade just so every bit of stemware and flatware must be laying at the right position He's a man of intense perfection. Sounds like a lot of fun at parties, ironically. <laughs> Presenting them, at least. Well, as long as he, you know, not so much his attendance. <laughs> not, not attending those. <laughs> ah. What of this other man, this, this artist? You know him? This Warhol. Hamani Warhol. Nay, I do not. I know he is some sort of traitor, of art traitor, but that's all I know. I know that he is fair semi. Ah, that alone makes him a suspect. <laughs> she, she snickers. Well. <laughs> oh, not this song again, she says. Everywhere I've been in Kale Tyrion over the past two days, they're all playing Vetter Cobain songs. Yes, we met him. His troop, um, his troop of uh, troubadours will be here as well. They're not on the list, but they will be there. They're the band. They are. They call themselves Oblivion. <laughs> I can give you their names if you wish to take a tally. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Better and uh, Cobain. A man named Burkhard. <laughs> 
Prover. Everman. Foster. Grohl. Novoselic. Peters. And Ruthenberg. Entertainers they all, go, all. They all go by one name. <laughs> well, they are the Oblivion. They are one of the most well known troops of troubadours west of the Axewater. Uh, Lord Clayton Arcaea spared no expense to ensure that uh, Vetter Cobain's performance this evening is impeccable and perfect. Okay. Good parole is a man of many talents as well. Mm. Drummer, flautist, singer, lutist. Charitable man. What's your, uh, what's your dancer's name? Delilah. Delilah. Mm. The name is not familiar to me, she says. Um, well, know anything about the... R.H. Block. Oh, the tax man. No, he's been taken off of our list, but could there be a reason that possibly to put him back? Well, he is a tax collector. He is disliked. I can tell you because I don't even know who he is. Nobody likes the tax man. The king. <laughs> and sure, <laughs> certainly Lord likes. Clayton Arque. And your baroness will surely like them. Well, I, what I know of Master Block, and this stays in our circle, so we are in a circle of trust. I, as I understand it, mm. uh, R.H. Block is a, uh, a bit of a lush, an abuser, to the speak, to use the parlance of the adherents of inebriants. Mm. Mm. A drunk. Mm -hmm. Not only that, to make matters worse, mm. he is apparently... Uh, a, a bit of a pugilist when he drinks too much. An angry drunk. Uh, he likes to fight. Hmm. Yeah. Huh. Drunken fighting tax man. That, that does sound like he's from... I wonder how he keeps all his teeth. <laughs> <laughs> well, he usually probably has soldiers with him when he's collecting those taxes, so... Maybe he keeps them in a in a jar. Could be. Perhaps he right. takes ten percent of the teeth that he encounters. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. What about this ice cream man? You know him? Uh, well, creamed uh, ice. I'm sorry. I know ice, he, cream I, of the ice. I know he's Gothric. That's about it, judging by the name. Ah, again. I think we need to put him back on the list. I'm pretty sure that he's Cahabram. If you're willing to put the Alornite back on the list, I'll put them on the list. Cahabran. He's a Cahabran and he's Gothric? That's, that's like a double way. No. No, they are not. You say so. I've been to the City of Lights. It's very beautiful. Hmm. I think you just got put back on the list. <laughs> <laughs> she smiles. <laughs> It is an interesting story. I went there many years ago with Master Hexenstern <clears throat> in a, a Lornite delegation. We met some friends there. You know, she's definitely on the list. <laughs> so, I don't. Anyone else on the list that we don't know? The tax man we didn't know. We really didn't know the, the ice cream man. But. The oh. Lady AK. Okay. The Lady AK. Okay. We know her. Lady Gabriella. Yes. Somewhat. She is not a fan of your Baroness. She is not. Uh, Are there children? All. I'm sorry? Are there heirs? Oh, to the Arcades? Absolutely. <laughs> 100%. She's no like male that. heirs, however. No male heirs. She stays on the list. <laughs> <laughs> They're all on the list! <laughs> Kill them all. <laughs> the Let the steward sort them out. <laughs> yes, that's the way to do this. Unfortunately, I have no other information that I've learned in the past 24 hours. I 
I've been mostly uh, been concerned with uh, ensuring that this paperwork is ironclad. Should we have the Lord Baron Clayton Arcade's signature, this will be the catalyst that the Baroness needs to begin the separation plan. So if all goes well, we'll have a very peaceful resolution to this. And what if it doesn't? Well, that's what you all are here for, to figure out. You are Dufresne. I'm not Dufresne. You keep saying that. I just... We don't have much to go off on. I just... I worry that... Maybe we missed something. Oh, you know? most assuredly, we've missed something. But it's I'm, whether it'll matter. Well, exactly. If, 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 it, if it does matter... Uh, and everything goes south, what, what do we do? Well, when I pull my pistol, I shoot whoever goes towards the... Oh, goodness. I had almost forgotten to mention. Yeah. That was actually a joke, but I... <laughs> <laughs> sure, there was no weapons in his presence. Lord Clayton R.K. is a pacifist, a pacifist indeed, but... Mm-hmm. Knowing uh, what will potentially unfold there... He has every bit of confidence that uh, you will ensure that he is safe. And of course, he has his trusted honor guard, along with Dirge the Younger. Yeah, I mean, we ain't gonna be bringing no weapons in there. I should hope not, she says. I would would Hmm. insinuate it, but uh, I'm just saying, you know, say he, someone gets to him or what, what have you, what comes next? Well, you see, that's when we would want to try and separate them somehow. And that usually involves putting yourself in between them. So, if I'm nearby, I'll be trying to put myself in between them. I must inquire, she says, as... I have not yet added your names to the guest list. I was uncertain what your thoughts were on that. If you are to attend, of course you may come as you are, but you must observe the rituals of the party. I trust that you have purchased your masks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I thought everybody did. I thought, that was, I thought they was got purchased for us, actually. Uh, no, we bought them. Oh, I can't you bought them depending on how what social class you were. How much you spent. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we're going to come as we are, as we were, as you want us to be. Uh, I'm <laughs> probably putting on my garish attire right now. It's good. It's good. It's very topical, too. It is very topical. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I shall take your names, put them on the roll, and you shall be announced to them. Yes? What? Is that how you want it? Well, we're going to be there early, and, and that's that's why we may not be analysis because we'll already be inside. Mm. I right. see. Our servants, so we would be servants at that time. No, we're going to be attendees, right? Well, Maybe attendees we're... cannot arrive until six. So six we're gonna, are we going to show up and then leave and then come back? We would have to wait in the line to be announced. That's why she's asking. You have to get put on the roll call. So not all of us time. should be announced. All right, so who wants to be there early? Because I've got a... Uh, oh, I can we've go, got I can go early. Right. Yeah, you said you wasn't wearing a mask. Well, I got my plague mask. I mean, I'll wear a mask, <laughs> but, I'll wear a mask, but I ain't making any bones about who I am. That's, well, that's, that's just not how I am. Well, but that's the point. You acting like yourself is the point of this party. Well, you, you know how I always am. I, I'm not the type to... Tell, tell, tell tales and do be you. I'll go in. Just early. be a dumb shucker that you are, Sammy says. That's, that's right. I got that down. <laughs> Sammy's not going to change. I mean, that's not going to shuck itself. <laughs> nah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go up there with uh, Lady Mansfield here. Mm. Right, right. Mistress Mansfield. Whatever. I can go in early. I'm fine with that. I'm also fine with going early. Yeah, if you're going early, you ain't going to be a guest. So, if you want to be a guest, because you feel like you could do better on a mask, then you want to be announced. And I think that you and I have duties to be guests. 
Oh, yes. <laughs> he must he must be us also because he has to announce our prize, right? Or your gift of this monstrosity. <laughs> Whatever that is. No monstrosity in the marvel of the modern world. Master Stevens. As you wish to call it. When you present the guest list, however, uh, I'm afraid my wife is not feeling particularly well, and she will not be accompanying me this evening. Mm. Terribly sorry to hear that. Well, I wish her all the best. You know, the water is different. Mm. She smiles. That makes it sound like she's so drunk. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it does kind of bad. Where are we going? <laughs> well, my she has hysteria, head. because, you know, it's the man's world. Um, Her time of the... Uh, the road was dark and long. I'm oh, sorry. It's a dark and stormy night. Yeah. <laughs> the long and stormy start that way. Um, so, uh, fair enough. my question is, if you're going to follow... What's his name? That would make sense for you to go early. Right. If you arrive early, she says, then you will be known as a guard. You will, they will, the guests will know as such. It will certainly give you a certain level of privilege that a guest would not. But guards do not simply comfort with the famous people who will be there. You will have, certainly you will have run of the house, but you will not have the... Famous. You will not have... These are people from the sticks. <laughs> you all are. Famous. <laughs> so you My father's early. not even on this guest list. Uh, yep, you, almost. You, you famous. Not even this, there's no other... Right. There's no representatives even here. <laughs> Almost. Yes. Uh, you know what they're going to be. You want me to wear, or should I just wear whatever? Come as you are, but once again, know that you, you come as a guard. Mm -hmm. That you will not be given. You will. You will not be interacting with the guests. You will certainly have a greater level of privilege throughout the house, but on the ballroom floor, <clears throat> no. One of us has to do that. Well, I haven't been practicing my dancing, so... Uh, I already said it would be me. Although I am rather coordinated, I feel like I'd probably could dance you on the floor. That's fine. That's, that's, that's the Baroness fine. does favor you, Master Harper. She does? Well, why else would she have chosen you and the new frame to carry through it this very noble and esteemed duty? Yeah, perhaps Since she should point. be representing her, little boy. <laughs> Well, I mean, that's a good point, too. Um, I mean, if you want to announce me, that's fine. I'll then it's, then it's so. So whose names can I put on the list? Who will be arriving at six? She inquires. There's everybody that's over here. I guess I'll go. So Harper Clavager. Terwin Forrester. Terwin Forrester and Banneker Steeples. It would be the, um, the second. Mr. Vander. Yes? Are you going in as a guest as well? I am, uh, I am without choice in that matter, as I am uh, to present to the court. I cannot appear as a uh, guard or staff. That would be most improper. Lady Elisa? Yes, I'll be a guest as well. So... There's only going to be one guy. That's not bad. One very capable one. <laughs> yeah, let us know when we... I think we can all... Master Rhodes! Then you should arrive at uh, at the RK Estate at 4 p.m. That means when you hear four strikes the bell, strokes of the bell, you must be there by then. A little bit early. I ain't got no choice, but you two kind of do. Boss, you tell me. You want me to go early? Mm -hmm. I, I don't need to speak with any of these sick fans. They are, these are all... Again, this is, the, this is the pastor of, of royalties as far as of lords. You'll fit right mm -hmm. in then. Yes, I would. That's what I'm saying. These are these are my level. These are B-level lords. <laughs> <laughs> these are B-string. <laughs> these, these, these are... These, Junior varsity. <laughs> Junior varsity. Yes. These are JV aristocrats. <laughs> <laughs> these, are, these are the people that are trying to up jump to actual calling themselves barons. I actually know barons. Real ones. The ones who are trying like to up jump are the most dangerous, though. Exactly, though. That's 
what I'm saying, boss. If you tell me to go early, I don't care that I speak to any of these people. I would rather have two. But, uh, you're not wanting to go as a guard. Well, I've been, I've been kind of convinced that I probably should, you know, go as a guest. Okay. If the boss says I go, I go as a guard. I just don't want you to be alone. I don't have any problem with being alone. I would request a private audience with everyone the minute that we can afford it. Like each person one at a time? No. No. That would be time inefficient. <coughs> a lot of those words will repeat itself. Boss, make the decision. She needs to She needs to go. Warren Rhodes? Everyone else is on the guest list, is my understanding. I must be off. You You don't care, either way. Just put them on the list. Okay, yeah, well, then he's going to be with, he's going to be a guard too. I just, I don't feel right leaving you alone. I know you're capable. Master Vanneker. Your father. Everyone, everyone will be there. Your father is a high minister. I'm sure that uh, <laughs> Lord Clayton R. Pay will be tickled pink that uh, you intend to keep safeguard him, safeguard him. It reflects, yes. it reflects well on your father. Well. It's Thank good you. to know that you're, at least you, although you may not agree with what is happening, that at least you know that in the bigger picture of things, your father will flourish once the Durandal is seated from the kingdom. Possibly. Does Excellent. Despite certain protestations, we will share the same air. The words will travel through it as they have. That's I will hear you speak and vice versa. Mm -hmm. You know what, it's, you know what a, a guard can be? A statue that these idiots will speak in. Whatever they feel like in front of. Mm -hmm. And then on. I shall see you all at the sixth hour for those who are on the guest list. Uh, Simply from the Dupre uh, Pavilion, we shall have a. We shall have to take you by carriage there. Uh, for those who are to arrive at the 4 p.m., that's four clock strokes after the hour, Master Rhodes. I don't time. Both you and uh, and, and Master Steeples uh, will arrive at the fourth hour. So we do not bring masks. So you will be a, a guard. Yeah. Oh, so I don't have to wear. I'm certain that uh, that uh, the quartermaster will require some manner of garb for him to wear. That is for certain. So that you do not stand out. Everything must be to a speci specificity. Hmm. This is a very well-esteemed party, after all. <laughs> she laughs. Hicks from the sticks, as you said, Master Steeples. It is. Master Vander's words do ring true. No less. I shall see you soon. All right. Good day. She leaves, leaving only the five of you, including Sammy Newhouse. Wolfgang Copper is not returned, but you know that he is going to be there this evening. You find a quiet place to talk. So I've been... Uh laying sort of out of sight and we've not had the opportunity to change word, exchange words recently and I'm already second guessing myself uh, with what I'm about to say but I would like to present something to you, something logical even though it may seem an inverse upon the table. It's just six minutes, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I have uh, warred in my mind for many a minute to whether I should share this with you or not, but I have decided that uh, I have trusted you with my life and that trust has been rewarded. I, I'm going to try to sell something to you now and I'm curious to hear what you'll say. There's a game that's played commonly in Gothmore and called Groff Castle. It actually starts as a children's game, but it is a game of intense strategy and can be taken to the most expert levels all the way up to multi-time masters who take 30 years to master all of its nuances. 
And every year in Cahabra, they all gather to play, and the greatest masters battle each other frequently to stalemates or to year-long games that never uh, resolve. It's something you can go to esteemed schools to learn properly how to play at its best, and as I said, many years to master. The only way to beat a master at this game is to have such a foolish, reckless, rudimentary idea of how to play the game that they are so trapped up in their own ways and their own certainties and their own idiosyncrasies that they are unable to adjust in time and can face defeat at the hands of a novice, almost as if that person was a madman. It will never work twice, but it can work once. Allow me to, to we clarify what I mean. We play mad. Mm, in a manner of speaking, I suppose. Your would-be assassins have had months to plan and know all of the characters and those that play very, very well. It is their board. It is their game. I think the best chance to achieve victory at this is to not be mad specifically, but change the game in which it's being played. Be unpredictable. I have an idea. And you're going to think me mad, but I'd like you to hear me out. Go on. I'd like to abscond with the mad one. <laughs> Say you this so that uh, we knock people off kilter, or do you say this from a perspective of not wanting to let go of such an artifact that could be of interest? If I did feel that way, then I would not be telling you this now. So let me understand. But believe me, I thought that perhaps that would be the response. Let me, let me, no, no. Well, it seems fair. Let me understand. You want it to does. go on with the Madeline, and when it's gone, how does that help? Everyone will be out of sorts. They won't know how to react. And you're, you're thinking that somehow or another the killer will reveal themselves in the chaos. Correct. As the evening will not go as anticipated. Mm. That is your best possibility. Mm. So you're thinking without the gift, the assassin won't need to kill the Baron because he'll be upset? No, I don't think the gift has anything to do with it. I simply think that it changes the position of pieces on the board in a way that they will not anticipate. And in doing so, you will be able to tell so what is the, what is the right play. Because the current theory right now is that killing the, the Baron, or would-be Baron, uh, would destabilize uh, the Baroness's position, right? The would-be Baroness. Well, she's a Baroness. Yep. She would be queen. Would be queen. Right. Yeah, yeah. Correct. So, so I have heard from uh, your conversations that you have uh, generously shared with me. So Bam. why why would taking Dude, away the so Madeline keep that from happening? Or get the well, well, assassin to not assassinate? From what I understand, this party's going a certain way, right? And then you, you upend everything, turn the table over, and it goes a different way. Well. It will be unclear as to which... Uh, side or loyalties we appear which will throw some things into confusion and as uh, as Warren so eloquently said it just changes the board okay. it changes into a game that neither one of us know how to play but that's better than only one of us not so, so how that's what I was about to say <laughs> Uh, you, you can't you can't fly it like they keep saying that could happen. You don't know how to pilot a ship, so how would you abscond with it in the first place? Oh, actually, I mean, getting do you a know how to pilot a ship by yourself. This is a large ship. I would require a crew. I'll say as I look across the lower city at all of the <laughs> uh, sink houses filled with sailors. We don't tend to take it to the air. We put it down the river. And mind you. I, I did not wish, I hope I didn't have to say this, but I'm not intending to rob the, to rob his lordship of his gift. Oh, no. Uh, Simply be, intending to misdirect all involved, including him. So you're saying to be if you return in due time. So, 
just wouldn't hurt anyone. Well, the gesture's still we'll there. The bar- your, your barrister, the lady barrister, is trying to secure I would, signatures. I would not. I would not include her in this conversation. That's that's what I mean, though. Her cementing the signature comes tonight, and the cement is created by that gift. But the wonder. None of that matters if he's. That. If he's given it, and it should disappear at that point, because I don't believe we're loading it up on some kind of cradle and taking no, it up No, 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 I guess that's state. true, but who would but have to But if he's given it, it and then it leaves or disappears later, she has been solidified. You're going to, somebody else is going to speak to the gift. The idea is what gift? The gift will be gone. Yeah, but that's the point is, he's not going to go out on his balcony and look at the lower city and it's going to be dark. They know yeah. it's been here. So it's been in the this, this sleuth. Uh, uh, at, what, what, at what point is the gift actually given? Tonight. Usually after dinner. Would be I believe the bear was going to do a speech at seven, 7. And then afterwards the treaty would be signed. So and so a, at what point would he actually see the Madeline? The gift would be presented at 7, I would assume. Because that's when the toast is to take place. So, so he would looks, make the most sense. So he looks down on the on the lower city and there goes the Madeline down the river. Down the river. As he watches. Is the river alright to navigate? To, Tobias seemed to be of a mind that it was going to be too close to ice over and it's hard to navigate at this point. And I do believe it does um, sink. A bit. A bit. It's barely, it's barely seaworthy now. So got it How going. Long? we got it going last time. We just had to bail it. And if you've got a crew that's used to having to deal with bailing things, I mean, it's probably quite a few sailors that are going to be out of work right at this moment. What was so, the season So okay, coming? it wouldn't be hard to hire. I don't think we'd have any trouble finding the crew. It's so a no. holiday. Yeah, and I know, but we know where they all are. The I can see them from here. Probably move that down the river a bit. Uh, I bet so, if you just got a cast alone, you might be able to get them to work. Right? So, between six and seven is basically the window of time in which we have to make this work. So play it out for me, then. The Madeline goes missing, and then what? What's our next move? We've caused chaos. For what Within chaos, they'll try to take the advantage well, and use that window to kill, right? They'll probably Possibly. look to, yes, like she said, they'll adjust their play to match the new conditions of the game. So the key for you is to find out who is clearly rethinking and replotting first. Well, my, my only worry here is could we, if, if they see us doing all this, then they could see it's too dangerous, too hot going on, and then they postpone what they were going to do until later. But if he signed the papers, what do we care? Right, that's the biggest reason why we want to prevent this murder. Now, don't get me wrong, I don't want any, anyone dying that, you know. Well, I don't, but his guards can take care of it at that right. point. It's, uh, the biggest thing is that he signs this paper and is legitimized before he dies. The, the whole purpose is to stop him from signing. If they're already signed and taken care of, what does it matter? They're not going to bother with him at that point. Is he willing? Why risk it? Is he willing to sign on the paper? If with just gets, with just seeing the gesture of the of the boat coming in, and not having the, the actual thing in, I mean, would would he see the boat going down the river and say, "Hey, Madeline is trying to give me the boat, but you know she had a bad actor that was trying to take off with it." But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead in good faith sign sign the treaty because if it's gone and he ain't going to sign it, then nothing doesn't do any, us any good, does it? If he's wise, he'll understand the symbolism of the act at the moment and the choice of the timing. Well, from what I know of Lord, sometimes they can be prideful. Hard to anticipate his actions. Well, if there was a bunch of drunken sailors screaming as the boat went flying off, they could just assume it was revelers. <laughs> <laughs> just I mean, joyriding the mountain down there. It's a there. holiday, right? And it would be known that those of us that were guarding it, per se, are up at the party, so why would it be that off to believe that that could happen? Like, I see your point. That leads to something happening that's pretty ugly next, though, that well, they would like to avoid. They would kill all those sailors. They would probably do that if you take it out of love. 
And that is if it doesn't sink. There's always that. Yeah. So I'm not saying it's the only idea. What's the uh, possibility of just hiring people to do it and you are the one presenting it and you look shocked when you point it out and it's not there? It would be, uh, I could certainly... Uh, they may not bring it back. I could certainly uh, help sell the idea of that, but I, my intent was to be present with it as well as hopefully one other. So you would not be given the speech then? I, the, the truth is is that if I do not appear, or if one of us does not take it upon the Madeline and we hire someone to steal the Madeline, then that is no longer a ruse. The Madeline is in fact <laughs> actually stolen. <laughs> if you all agree to do this, if this is what you think is the we right thing have to do. Sammy here. We don't want Sammy here? No. no. I'm Absolutely sorry. not. Okay. None of those all right. people. Okay. Hell Perfect. <laughs> all right. Good. <laughs> no, no. I, uh, I would just like to say I ain't against this plan. I think, I think there are far it. too many holes. I'm all for it. I'm for it. I'm I'm literally, for there are holes that, that in this plan. <laughs> holes, small holes all over. So, so, so can we? What is your end game? Would you just moor it lit further down the river and jump off and leave it for them to find again? Uh, no. Because otherwise, they will catch you and punish everyone that's on that ship. I'm relying on you to speak for my virtue and intent when this is all, when That's the dust settles. But and I will happily, we, we will happily moor it down the river. So does she need to have him sign before the gift is presented? How does the sequence of events happen? So we can cut through some of these holes. My thought is, is this works better than us trying to keep our eyes on all these people that we have no idea about. I mean, uh, hey, it's the Cahabro Shuffle. We were trying to figure yes. out how to do it. You'll still have to. It's just they'll be a lot easier to see. I mean, he, you know, talked about his fancy lordly game of <laughs> Gothrics. But yeah, it's a Cahabro Shuffle. Never heard about this in the streets. I mean, you, whatever. I'll have a look it. over here. But you, I'm not playing them diamond type of games. Ain't right. Okay, well, whatever. I mean... Think about this. It's better than what we're doing. Well. So what is the sequence of events? Does anyone know? Does He gives his speech. I'm going to go out for the queen. Ah, everyone yells or people boo depending on which side they're on. And then does he sign before he gives the speech? Does he have the document in hand and he's already look and then? Well, he, one would assume you'd have to do some grandiose gesture before signing, right? I mean, you, you you have to call everyone's attention to the fact that you're signing. Right. You so don't then, sign so and then, then, then you go give the speech, you sign, and then the gift is presented. Uh, I would assume the gift is presented. He gives a speech stating why he's doing what he's doing, and then he signs. But I don't know a sequence of events. That one just makes the most sense. We need to find that out. Oh, well, the barrister would have been the best to ask, and she appears to not be here anymore. Well, we do have still time to run to the old city, to the Debray camp, and figure out exactly what that is. I think if we... I think if you save the man's life, then you sign once the dust is settled. Yes. I also do not know that the speech given at seven will be his toast to I'm signing. Could be that he signs at the very end of the night. I don't know. Again, okay, there's a lot we don't know, but I do think that this is a poor idea for a good very many reasons. We'll give you reasons, because saying that's a poor idea with no explanation just means... Well, I think it's a poor idea for you to bend your knee, but to be fair. we've left that alone at this point. We've known Jonathan all of, what, a week? A man who has absconded onto the boat beforehand might have gone with the boat again? I'm not saying I don't wholly trust him, but I don't. Well, that's not very fair. I trust you, Jonathan. Well, I mean, that mistrust is certainly, like, earned, and I understand that. But if that were my intent, then why would I sit here and tell you this right oh. now? <laughs> well, because there will be four of us with you, and when you're out showing up, we'll wonder where you're at. And if you're all of a sudden on the boat, well, I mean, again, I just think it's a poor plan. There's a lot of holes in it. And well, so I think we just go in and we. Your, your untrust is your is, is why you think this is a poor plan. Okay. Because you give another to, uh, no other reason. To be fair, that it would literally sink. 
A current not water tight. Uh, a current, all right, all right, a current all right. has more hey. holes in it than we're still bucketing it. Out. Let him <laughs> let him say his piece, so, and then give your rebuttal. <laughs> so the plan is currently proposed as we're going to either hire a bunch of people with. Jonathan at their head to steal this boat, somehow return it, not get everyone killed and or drowned and or wrecked. Uh, because if you remember, the river flows back towards the mountains. So they will be going back towards that territory with no way to get back upriver since we had to haul it with oxen. Uh, let's see here then. Um, you saw, you should I continue from this poor plan? Or should I just stop there and call it done? Uh, well, we weren't sailors, nor was there anybody on the boat that was a sailor. And you can't go upstream, as far as I know, without a team full of oxen. So you then can. do we have to hire a said to full team of oxen to go down, drag it back up? Hope that they have not been wrecked or attacked by giant men or picks? I mean, you can get any boat anywhere with oars. All right. I mean... I guess anything is possible if you believe hard enough. That's the spirit. Every per yeah, there we go. Now, you, now you're every single, pizza now you're is a personal sized pizza if you try and eat hard enough. <laughs> it's a hmm. flat bread with <laughs> cheese and tomato sauce, and usually different types of meats. See, this, uh, this sounds like something straight from your friend Hustle. <laughs> Well, he told me about him. That's, yeah, well, it's, it's a Pharisee thing. It's a Pharisee <laughs> thing, exactly. You know, this, that's the next thing. This is the next big thing. He told me to keep it secret. What's it with you and strange foods? I swear. <laughs> so you've discussed a, a potential alternative plan. Is there another way to do this? Cause a hullabaloo at the party? <laughs> yeah, there's plenty of ways to do that. <laughs> well, <laughs> not to do it the worn way. <laughs> it's a good idea. I like it. I mean, it causes chaos. The idea we have isn't going to work because we don't know any of these people. We don't. We haven't had enough time to investigate them. I mean, let's say it's the ice cream guy. Why do we think it's not? Or don't think it's the ice cream guy because he likes ice cream or creamed ice, whatever this concept is, where he puts ice and cow's cream together and puts sugar in it, and he then throws fruit. That sounds like a crazy person. That sounds like what a crazy person would do. Speaking well, of, how about this? Speaking of ice and crazy, let's be careful not to let this turn into ladder than ice. I get so it. Let's, let's try and keep this moving. So what were you going to say? Oh, well, I was going to say if we want to cause chaos, I can just bring one bullet and a gun and shoot it off. And then that would just trigger everyone to keep on their guard. And then the assassin would have no chance of doing that. And I'd just spend a night in jail. Worse. Then again, it's a pacifist. These guards probably don't have weapons to kill. The guards will have weapons. But not necessarily to kill. If you work for a pacifist, well, it's possibly a saps and such. <laughs> Does that oh, there's saps. Having right. wandered around <laughs> the city for the last few days, I've certainly found plenty of saps. <laughs> I mean, you yeah. still have that single loaded pistol, right? Yes. Of course. Well, no. Again, I don't care what we do. If this, if this thing go, if this thing lights on fire tonight, and the king is still on the throne tomorrow, it makes me happy. I have been trained to be quiet and to avoid detection. So starting a ruckus is not necessarily my fault. Though. I mean, if we're talking about flipping over the board, yes, we all know it's a hail martyr plan, but it's the only plan we got. <laughs> right. I certainly did not mean to cause any uh, any affront. Mm -hmm. I presented it in the most logical way that I could explain it. No, it makes sense. It's just, is it worth the risk? That's what I'm trying to... What you're going decide. to do now is going to fail. Yes. Mm -hmm. I thought that already. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't care what else. I, I have no stake in this. I have no skin in the game. But what you're going to do now is going to fail. They've had months, you've had three days in a foreign place. 
with the list of potential people that we're not entirely sure of and only a and color to go off of. Right, and we, we eliminated people just simply because we didn't have the time to interview them or even approach them. Again, yeah, assumptions. Well, <laughs> creamed so the ice only means the man is okay. <laughs> well, to be honest though, the only other way to protect is, well, we know where the target is and if the target's not able to be hit. That is the only other way, but I assume... I'm not taking a bullet for this, this up, John. Well, I assume whoever is going for him has already thought of that process. It's possible that something's already been set plan, in place then. that's going to take him out. I don't know. Hopper needs to switch places with me. You see Sammy and Wolfgang walking uh, down the docks. There's some, they're a few minutes out, but they're approaching. The important consideration of the uh, the metaphor that I used of the Groff Castle game isn't that you flip the board over. That doesn't win you the game. That simply ends the game and means you have to clean up. See, I don't know enough about that the key game. The is just to play the game in a way that they don't expect you to play the game. I don't know enough about that game, but I know, I know a thing or two about when I used to play with cards with me uh, mates back at home, and I didn't quite get too much of it, but if you could get them to show their hand early, before it was really truly time, then uh, I'd get you to win too. So we're wanting to get them to show their hand, and this is the best way to do it. And, and getting the ship back up the, the river, really, it's not that big of a deal for the simple reason, and let me just explain this, is we explain to his new baron ship that we just saved your life, your gift is 300 yards down the river, please get a team of oxen down to fetch it. It ain't gonna be it's, a matter of money. Here's something I want you to do. It solves your problem. Here's, you know your letters, right? I know, yeah. Of course. You got a writing kit? I do. I want you to write up this plan, and I want you to give that letter, I want you to sign it, I want you to give that letter to uh, Elisa. That way, when we see it's gone, and the, the killer is forced to show the end, it's all said and done. She can present it to anyone that might be wanting to go after you. I would just like to say I think this is a terrible plan, and when it, it goes is. all wrong, I'll tell you I told you so. It's a terrible it plan. It is a terrible plan. All right? I'm just saying, right now. So I'll what's your you know. plan? Yeah. At this point, Sammy and um, Wolfgang are actually on the ships. They've been walking up the gangplank. Well, looky here. It's a stranger. Boys. My lady. Mm. Wolfgang says. How's your health? Fair enough. This... Air in the mountains made me a bit ill. He uh, says sternly. Well, glad you feel better in time. <laughs> Say, uh, I'm pretty sure you already know, but uh, your brother was looking for you. I know. I spoke with Genity the night before. So, uh, he might have known you were here because of me, so. He told me as much. Told me as such. Mm. Sorry. Bound to happen regardless. If okay. it was not last night, it would have been at the uh, the ball. Okay. Well, I'm assuming we can move move past it, eh? Okay. So, yeah. I mean, if we've got another option, I'm willing to hear it. Not do something so crazy and risk losing the prize and ruining this whole thing for us, but cool. yeah. Hold on, do you know exactly? You're talking to Wolfgang or Sammy? Yeah, I don't know. Is it uh, Master Wolfgang? I can't remember. Sure. I, mean, I don't remember the state of... I know our relationship is poor. Master Wolfgang, do you know the, uh, the, the, the alignment of... The sequence of events of how this, this, this will, will happen tonight with the signing and proclamation of, uh, to your parents? I can't say. I'm not one for the... Uh, Courts myself. Uh, nor am I, but you're the only other the only other aristocrat among us didn't know, and you don't know either, so I'm a Rovanian, he says bluntly. Ah 
stick up your ass is still there, so awesome. Mm. Alright. Well if I have a more certifiable plan of action. Your call. I'm just gonna get all fancy now. And I'm gonna walk away and start getting dressed. <laughs> That's probably some of the, one of the stupidest things we've ever done, but we're gonna do it. And that's saying a lot. Well, well, we're just gonna get ready for this party, I suppose, Sammy says, kind of pulling his collar as he's clearly walked into a little bit of a, a trap. <laughs> this is completely insane.
Or less yeah, than Jason. I do. Hey, Thank uh, you. Daniel's uh, the Gentlemen, behold! Well, you want a few more? You're good. I'm good. Thank you very much. Hey, is that my play? Yeah, is that your play? Oh, well, thank you. It's not show play Anybody anymore. Else? Oh, Chips? man, there's yeah. so many parts. Four. Right after yeah. all that talk about like <laughs> he o <laughs> he oleaned you <laughs> for That's a bad one too. Oh my god, what did you for lunch today? Lunch? Uh, yeah. For sandwich? No, that's not bad. Yeah. What did you eat for dinner? I had. Oh chicken god! Strips. He had Jesus Christ! Chicken strips. He yeah. had you sick fuck. <laughs> he had Ains. He had Ains. Here, hold on. Actually, hilariously, like uh, burn, 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 at, burn. Uh, at the wrestling show last week, like uh, Kevin Q, Dominic Garini, and uh, what's her face, Alley Cat, were all really excited to go to like Canes because they don't have them in Nashville. I'm like, hey, you lot. guys have good chicken. Like you don't. Yeah, need Nashville chicken's good. You don't have to eat like chain <laughs> chicken. Like, but they were super excited. Like, oh man. Good it is, it is like, good, but it's not like I've never had amazing it. good. It's there, fine. Yeah, like, yeah, it's fine. It's, Fast food chicken. Yeah, it's, it's like slightly above that, average fast food. I like it's, Strouds if I'm going with chicken. So. Me too. But it, honestly, it's like those people that talk about uh, Chick Fil A like it's God. I'm like, it's a chicken sandwich, and it's not that good. Yep. And they're biggest pieces of shit. <laughs> it's true. Team they are homophobes. <laughs> There's a place in Olathe called Strips, which is really fucking yeah. good. Like that Strips place is, is good. insanely good. Actually, like it really? shouldn't be that good. Actually, yeah. it sounds weird, but their gluten-free chicken tenders are actually better. Hmm. I haven't tried one of those. So let's jump into the Friday. let's jump into the story. They right. taste like pretzel. Friday strips and seven. Pretzel cup. <laughs> so, yeah. So we'll do a countdown here real quick. So. Anybody need a drink? Come again. You don't want anything, Tim? No. You good now? Okay, mm -hmm. so. Okay, and we're back for Queen of Embers, uh, where we left off. So, in order to arrange for the sailors, it will be one gold crown and four, one gold crown and twelve brass pieces to get nine sailors. All right. You want some of that, or you, you get it all? I don't have much money. I could have definitely uh, used I'll some. I'll take uh, care of the one gold crown. I am pitching nothing into this. <laughs> I'll give you the 14. <laughs> and obviously, Jonathan Vander has already crafted the letter and given it to Elisa. So oh, Elisa definitely. has the letter. I definitely want to give on this. Chaos. <laughs> <laughs> so this means that around 4 o'clock, this means that you, mm -hmm. Warren, and, um, <clears throat> excuse me, and Banneker Steeples will arrive at the RK Manor early. And already, it is, it is, there is already kind of people beginning to gather. The sounds of the banquet are kind of gathering. You are joined in this very opulent, but small, uh, refined, if you would, the R.K. Estate. As you're ushered inside uh, by uh, Kennison Algiers, a man who you can imagine is very well, you know, his, his clothing he wears is very stately, obviously, um, with a high collar. He has his hair as per his comb just so. He has a mere um, suggestion of a beard as he is not as he is not shaved this is, this is the times um, but his, his kind of long feathered hair is parted in the middle and kind of drawn back he's got a feathered haircut from the 80s he's got that haircut <laughs> that, mm -hmm. that, that guy <laughs> he will uh, he will uh, well he will walk you cool. he will walk the two of you around the manor as he's walked us around I'm just going to keep a, an eye out for anything suspicious Her. So Plex is a hubbub of activity, and there's a lot of old things here. Like, almost as if Lord Clayton R.K. was a collector of sort. There are some paintings that are well-known, in fact. Uh, some of the names kind of ring a bell even with you, um, Banneker. But he'll take you through the stables, he'll show you to the servants' quarters. He takes you to a garden that's dominated by ferrous semi-marble. That he 
shows. This is where the guests will be free to mingle among uh, red decorative lanterns that he points out above the garden. There's a nearby well. And of course, all access is the pantry and the kitchen and the vestibule. He says that here in the vestibule is where we'll where Dirge the Younger will be taking weapons and storing them for the night, should anyone bring them. He says, here's the gallery. He walks you down this long gallery. And normally we would have our parties here in the gallery. However, um, because of the size and um, of the of the party and the number of guests and the importance of the of the winter solstice, we'll be having it in the main ballroom. He takes you to a pair of sweeping stairs to the second floor, where an old grandfather clock kind of dominates with the stairs being above, ticking and gonging at times like very loudly. He says, the guests will stay here on the first floor. No one will be allowed upstairs. That's where uh, the, uh, the Lord and Lady's personal quarters are in their children's nursery, he says. He'll take you down to the main ballroom where you see those clearly where the guests will meet and mingle and dance and eat. And, of course, a door leads from here into the garden. He just takes you through a, a sweep through the place. And it's very, l not large, but it's very stately. Very tall vaulted ceilings. Everything kind of echoes as you walk through it. You can see the zigzag floor pattern of wood in here. You can see where they're going to be setting up the band. He says, Oblivion will be playing here. He indicates in a in a bard's roost above the uh, ballroom. And being as this is a masquerade, where, where will be the, uh, you know, the other type of mingling that uh, nobles will be known to do in these types of masquerades? You know what I mean. Mingling. <laughs> No, the mingling shall occur here on the ballroom floor. Uh, really? Right out there in the open? <laughs> what about anyone new? <laughs> you know, what, what? I mean, uh, what I'm saying is, it's a masquerade and people don't know who each other is, and they get in all types of mischief, you know, clothed and unclothed, that sort of thing. Hey guys, You're saying people aren't allowed upstairs. He only takes two steps back. Good, sir. Right. What? That's what I've been told. I, I don't. I never been in a place a ball like this, but I heard there's all kinds of pants off types of things <laughs> my, going on. My my goodness, <laughs> Master Rhodes, you are sorely mistaken. This is not what the people in the lower city call a key party. <laughs> well, Rest uh, assured that Lord Stan, that Lord Clayton R.K. and Lady Gabriella are leal believers in the covenant and the martyrs in their truths and principles, according to the Libram. So blessed decorum throughout the party. Roll a ru roll a rumor test. Uh, I'm assuming to some degree probably Banneker is assisting here. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. Well, I mean, if, if you want, if you want to pitch it, if you want to chime in with something to to merit this, but I'm kind of going out on a limb here. What was the uh, password in Eyes Wide Shut? Parabellum. Fidelio or Fidelio. something like that? Like, yeah. we, we, were, we, were just not un we were just not sure what kind of recreations would be uh, happening. I, I didn't think it would be such. <laughs> he, he seems a bit off-put by this, but who knows? What's your uh, social class? I, my social class is Lowborn. Uh, he is a burger. Okay. Ah. So, and, uh, your test will be... Uh, if I have any bonuses here, I don't believe so. Your test will be uh, challenging. Okay. Challenge your rumor. All right, sure. so this is going to be a 46% <laughs> Gosh, y'all. Uh, y'all got them foot parties? Shut your darn. All right, so I actually rolled a 46. Whoa! But I also rolled a 66, so... Uh-oh. <laughs> womp, womp, womp. So a failure. Critical failure. Critical failure. 66. Yeah, you always have to take the match. This, this simply will not do, he says. <laughs> no, you, be gone. Be gone from that house. I don't care who you're with. I wasn't trying to give offense. I'm sorry. Out, I'm out. Sorry. You've offended me greatly. And you've offended uh, Lord, Lord Clayton R.K. and his lady Gabriella. Be gone with you. Out, out. As he's ushering you out the door. Well, I need that. Y'all got them fuck parties around here? <laughs> That's how it comes out. Yeah. You tell about the fuck? I was like, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I was just as stunned as him. Like, <laughs> Dalio, what are you saying? <laughs> oh I tried to save you, but I was like, oh, I don't know exactly uh, what the decorum will be. Okay. <laughs> pants on, pants off. <laughs> 
<laughs> is this one of them dicks out, tits out parties? <laughs> yeah, critical, a critical failure basically comes out in like the worst possible yeah. way yes. from Warren yes. at this point. <laughs> the most offensive you could possibly do. Warren can out watch. Yep. Y'all know them fuck parties? <laughs> Okay. Oh, Warren. <laughs> By the way, my name's Buck. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, yeah, uh, I would say probably that Warren Rhodes, given that you were of a lower social class and you kind of greatly off- <laughs> offended every sensibility that Kindness and Algiers would possibly have for this, you are going to be, you're, you are kicked out. You are not, you will not be allowed in the back of the house. And he said, should I see your face at this party? He said, I will do everything in my power to toss you out of your keystroke out of Kale Tyrion and see you at the docks. <laughs> I take it I take uh, some corruption here. <laughs> nope. Nope. Yeah. Okay. Not for a failed test like that. Okay. Okay. You meant it, Will. You meant Exactly. Yeah. You really just rolled poorly. Yeah, <laughs> really the key is still on to pussy wagon all <laughs> Oh, God. Will your big toe. Will your big toe. <laughs> So, so not too much later, Warren returns. Yeah. Um, I'm. But continue with the scene. You're not. Yeah. So no, we're at the. He will. The house. He will. Yeah. So at this point, Kennison is like, he will. He will not will, be allowed in here by I will any, any stretch turn of the imagination. On the charm. <laughs> I will apologize profusely. He is. He's a man of. He's a. He's up the north. He knows nothing of all ways. He's just a fool. He's kind of a fool, but... Lady Mansfield spoke very highly of the Dufresne. I am surprised to see someone of such low birth, so ill-tempered and crude in nature, to attach his name to the Dufresne. It's such a reputable agency. It takes all kinds to do what we do. We are not just at events like this. Sometimes I'm the boob in the room. If you can imagine that at Hmm. my station... And so would you be. Of course. We go to the slums, and we walk in castles. Well, nevertheless, let me show you the rest of the grounds, and he will walk you through it, and he'll say, <laughs> Master, Master R.K. will retire with some of the gentlefolk into his um, private sanctuary down below. Oh, sorry, we- that's happened. Do we know? Do we know? Do we know, <laughs> we know asked uh, <laughs> if we could get the timeline of, of events. Um. Indeed, I can tell you that it is four o'clock now. Once the clock strikes six, oh, and he points good. toward the grandfather clock, the guests will begin to arrive. They shall gather amid the cul-de-sac upon carriage. Lord Clayton R. K will arrive at seven, and he shall make his toast upon these stairs before the grandfather's clock. Once that occurs, then everyone shall put their masks on, and the masquerade shall begin. That is when, a, when uh, Vedico Bane's uh, troubadours oblivion will begin to play. They will have already been practiced, as they are arriving at 5.30 shortly before the guests arrive to tune their strings and to ensure that their drums are tight. Beyond that, <clears throat> I should suspect at some point in the evening, whenever Master R- whenever Lord R.K. feels it fit, he shall unmask himself, mm. and the rest of the guests shall do so as well, observing a polite hour, no longer than, perhaps, 10 p.m. in the evening. It will need to be as uh, your friend would call it, a rager. Yes, yes. It shall commence at a godly hour. So before, and, the, and you get and you get a very good sense that as he's saying this, and <clears throat> judging by the collections that Lord Clayton R.K. has among his halls, paintings mostly of saints and of gods and. Of, of more religious matters that he probably means what he says. Okay. So, so contextually, I would have known that this was a poor thing even when it started. Yeah. In fact, you find that um, Kinnison, Algiers, and the other household servants are all wearing holy symbols of the covenant around their neck. Openly. Out. Openly. Which is a bit gaudy, but... 
did he? I, I'm, we were we started talking about <laughs> new staff when <laughs> when when the pussy party started was discussed. <laughs> When's the fucking begin? <laughs> I think it's what Warren probably said. It. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know what else to call it. The frolic in the leaves, whatever you want to call words. Well, what, what, what are you, what are you asking? I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, again, before, before the rudeness of my uh, compatriot, uh, I wanted to know if has there been any new staff in staff. recent months? Recently, uh, our domestics have been among the arcana for years. Uh, all of them employed by myself, hand-picked through a rigorous, um, a rigorous interview process, chosen from the best of families and all of Kael Tyrion. Those who have served as guards have um, been here for quite some time as well, although we do have a new one on staff, a woman named Althea, a friend of Delilah. The dancer? Is that what Delilah is? Is one of the performers? Again, I don't know all of the... Hmm. Oh! Delilah is the performer, right? He... <coughs> Excuse me. Um, a friend of the house, he says. He straightens his cravat. Did he just mess up? Roll scrutinize test. Uh, this test will be do. routine. I'll get back to it for a Routine of uh, 51, and that's not going to work. <laughs> uh -oh. But is it a critical failure? That's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> no. Yeah. You guys want to re roll? You have this seven fortune points. This one seems pretty. Sure! Yeah. I'll take that this fortune yeah. point. Mm -hmm. Yeah! I mean, it's a 51. <laughs> okay. Better than half? No. Uh, not really sure. Bit. Maybe, maybe not. <clears throat> yes. Althea, he says. Yeah. And, and how, how new? And if she... Althea, he says. Yes. Some number of weeks. Dependable, loyal. That is for true. <clears throat> From a local family. He nods. Interviewed by Dirge the Younger. Dirge. The quartermaster. Yes. Meanwhile, back at the dock where the Madeline is, my Madeline is, Warren tells his story. Well, and yeah. there's a bit of hee haw going they, on, they, including from Sammy Newhouse. They, he can't help but laugh. They, they sh he's showing us around, and he, he's, he's going on and on about how the party's going to be confined to the, the, the garden and the ballroom. And I, and I just ask him, Where's the finger banging going on? Because I know they're going to be doing it. <laughs> and he didn't like that. He and the holy rollers over there all rent wearing the holy symbols threw me out. I'm, I'm sorry. You well, know. you're just the biggest damn dunce I ever met, Warren. If I ever met one, you sure are a grostutter, you, you hip, he I says. Just, did you use you, those words? Well, not in so many words. I, I kind of sugarcoated it, you know, as, you I, as I do. There's like four churches and then the stones throw where the de where the damn Madeline is, you oh, idiot! You know these people ain't like that. Come on. The hell they aren't! Ugh. We're down we up river from Rowling for the holy city, you they, mad? They, they they just they just talk like they are that, but they're not actually like that. Everyone knows this is one of them, them parties where they put on the mask and anything goes once it's on. Well, on, you know, I did wrong, but you know, I didn't know what I was getting into when I did. His story goes on for quite some time. <laughs> yeah. It is. Get ready. Yeah, we do. An interesting assumption. Can I purchase a uh, bolt of blue cloth? Absolutely. <coughs> uh, it will be uh, six shillings. Uh -huh. So, at some time or another, sometime around six p.m. Well, you get to stay on the boat. I guess so. <laughs> well, at least Jonathan will have some company. I could try to sneak in the party. Never mind. <laughs> I don't think that's a good idea. If we all get thrown out of the party, then the assassin won't know what to do. Uh, Welcome to the crew, son. <laughs> yes. Hey, if, if the assassin was 
uh, Kenneth and Algiers, who, who we were just talking to. Yeah. If the assassin was him, boy, that must have thrown him off his game. <laughs> <laughs> you did not see that move coming. <laughs> As you begin to gather towards Sunday, <coughs> you leave you leave the dockyards and you head up in the upper city, and the sun is already setting beyond the forest. And of course, down in the lower city, there's no sun to be seen because it is, of course, beneath the shadow of the bluff. But up here, you could have. You adjourn uh, with uh, Rosalia Mansfield as you come upon carriage and the rumbling of the wheels comes to a slow stop. And the sky is cast in a myriad of blues and twinkling stars as it is nighttime. And uh, as you come toward the estate, you can see a, a number of men and women gathered in their, in their, regal, in their finest of clothing, of course. Uh, immediately, you see at the doorway you find your man, uh, Banneker Steeples, who's dressed in this gaudy blue, like Robin's egg blue looking cape. So write down your blue your blue cape. All right. Sure. And all of the guards, in fact, are dressed in Robin's egg blue capes. Wow. Oh. As you begin to approach in line, the line here at, uh, at uh, the RK estate. A gentleman named Kinnison Algiers will announce each guest as they arrive. And as each guest arrive in this very stately kind of entryway, this uh, of uh, fair semi marble that is leading into the grand ballroom, you are, your names are announced in this case. Uh, Master Hopper. Clavija, Master Terran Forrester, Lady Elisa Marius. Do you make sure to be near Domino when she's announced? She is not here yet. Oh. No. Then Elisa would actually stay back <clears throat> until Domino is. So she's loiter her about in the. Yes. That's right. So you'll be amid, uh, you'll probably be near the uh, coaches and servants who are still near all the coaches, kind of parked out of this yeah. large cobblestone. Um, Cobblestone um, cul sac. Yeah, I'd be hanging out with Elisa at that point because I'm supposed to be part of that mm -hmm. thing, too. Fair enough. Okay. So. To wait for my date <laughs> and your date. As you come inside, yep. Harper, you're given a stemmed glass of effervescence. Oh. A, a clear glass that is tall and bubbling. I'll hold on to it, and uh, I'm guessing this is going to be like a toast or something, so. Already, uh, people are beginning to arrive slowly. <laughs> and You're Rosalia Mansfield arrives with Wolfgang Copper, or at least in Wolfgang Copper's arm. Hmm. And you see Sammy Newhouse, the Grahlstetter, kind of trailing behind him with the third wheel. <laughs> At, uh, some point around 6.15 or so, um, a, a fellow who, uh, without a doubt, must be our money Warhol, because he has a number of cleaners on kind of following in his wake who are dressed very strangely, await outside, and he himself uh, begins to approach. Our money Warhol, Algiers calls out his name. And that's when you spy this fellow, uh, who is clearly ferrocinic. Like, his skin is olive, he's olive skin. He's skinny and has really bad teeth. And he dresses kind of like what you'd imagine an artist would dress like, but he has this blue scarf around his neck. He's walking with a bottle of red wine in one hand, and uh, <clears throat> he's, he's, a, he's walking through the long gallery looking at the paintings. Uh, so, so, so far, the only person that's not wearing blue is with us. Well, the guards, five of the guards that you see, are all dressed in blue, as are you. Right. Uh, and the only other person in blue at this point is Armani Warhol. Right. That's it. Okay. Other guests are slowly kind of filtering in. However, uh, the party almost seems to pause about 6.30 as Dominus Satin kind of, she walks gracefully out of her coach uh, that is lacquered white and blue. She's wearing this this long blue gown, as is Elisa, Marius, in fact. 
uh, as they are dressed alike. And of course, you can see already that Terra Enforcer is going to put his little <laughs> pale blue, round his egg blue gloves on his hands. Oh man, I think I've got like. I've got. Uh, and a scarf. And a scarf is right. Yes, and I'm wearing a, a fancy wig. And. Uh, <laughs> I have a, an aristocrat mask and a, a, a cane. I have a cane as well. Yes. yes. You're a weaponized umbrella. We're from Final Fantasy. That's right. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you got a choker, but my lady Marius, master, okay. master forester. It is uh, an immense pleasure. I apologize for my tardiness. Uh, Domino says. Um, well, it's quite all right. Um, well, and I, I awkwardly bow to her, like. Well, aren't you dressed just, just fit and fine? <laughs> she comes up and just straightens your cravat and. Kind of, uh, she makes, she kind of tucks the, she moves the cape over just a little bit and buttons one of the buttons at your side. And this one, you can see Elisa that, you can see that the front of her dress is split and you can see this tattoo of a snake winding from her ankle all the way up her leg underneath the dress. Very suggestive. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, I'm not used to wearing such things, you know. Well, I trust that you are going to escort me in, Master Forrester. Uh, yeah, I, I, that's why I was here, is because, uh, you know, they wanted to bring me in, and I was like, no, I'm supposed to be doing that escorting this. Yeah. <laughs> it appears all others have begun to arrive. As you can, as the music begins. You can hear the clinking of glasses and the movement of people up on the floor, and the party begins to unfold as... Every guest has arrived that was on the list at least. They're still testing their strings and testing their their drums and ensuring that it all works appropriately. But, uh, the place is very, very busy. So right now all the masks are off. All the masks are off. Nobody is masked. I should ask this question, though, for those of you who were at the ball, who among you chose to sneak in a weapon? Time. I was going to ask, was I allowed to bring in a weapon? Because I didn't. You never. We never went through. No, that. no. The guards don't even have trunches. <laughs> they don't have anything. They don't yes. have anything. Nothing. Are you a knuckle duster? Nope. They have nothing. Now you can start to try to sneak something in if you want. No, the boss didn't tell me to. So. I'll... I did. What'd you bring? Knuckle duster. Okay. Anybody else bring a weapon in? I was, yeah, I was trying to see if I did buy a <coughs> so, cane sword. I had the thought and never did it, so... Uh, I have a walking cane. That you can take. No, I've got a cane. So, so Jonathan, with Sorry. Warren at the ship, will you be going to the party then? Mm. Do you have a pot with this thing? I can certainly try. Well, that's a no. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, we have good old... Uh, you, have a bunch of, you do have a bunch of sailors that you've already hired. Yeah, but if we leave them alone, like we said, then, the, then that's no longer the ruse of theft. That's well, an actual theft. Well, I mean, I'm here to, to watch him, watch over and give some legitimacy to it. You know what I mean? Legitimacy. I suppose that would, uh, that could be fun. Please watch after the missus and, uh, I'll hand over the bolt of blue cloth. <coughs> like when you when you remove yourself, when they remove themselves from the harbor, fly this as a flag. Hmm. It will give an indication that the uh, <coughs> that the fix is on. All right. Oh, and one last thing. Be very careful who you trust with information. Most certainly, including the barrister, should you see her. I'll straighten my tie and uh, prepare myself to go to the party. A little nervous now that I have to uh, give two speeches in the same day. <laughs> Jonathan Fenda is rather toddy. And in fact, he comes in and his name is not even announced as Lord Clayton Arcade gathers at the top of the stairs at the stroke of seven. And he's standing. He yes. was able to tell who, since I can see their faces, uh, is wearing blue. Oh, okay. Take a that was my question. I was yeah. a, during that time, I was able to talk yeah. to any of them. Well, the great thing is, is that uh, for those of you who are mingling, uh -huh. the chances will be much more difficult. For those who are watching over the party, 
staring at the door. It'll be different. So, uh, everyone around the table uh, may attempt a an awareness test for those who are guests at the party. It will be hard for those who are who is at who, who are guards at the party. It will be easy. Hard awareness is nine. That's a big thing. Thirty. I'm not using my looking glass. I'm sure. I failed also. Seventy-one (laughs) percent chance. A guard sitting. What's going on in here? (laughs) Ten feet away from me. (laughs) Something's not. Still got a seventy-one. So, uh, because you succeeded. You you have identified already Armani Warhol, who is wearing a blue scarf. Here's your blue marker. He's already blue. Yeah. You have identified Domina Satie, who is wearing a blue dress, similar to yours. You've also discovered that there are five guards who are wearing blue. Naturally, <laughs> Terwin Forrester is wearing blue. Okay, that's the person. That's yep. him. Get him. him. <laughs> and then found you. And then finally, you identify Sir Genevieve Copper is wearing a blue sash. Lady Arcade is not? No. She's not down yet either. She is. Oh, she is. Absolutely, her she husband is. Was the one. Oh. She joins her husband, Lord Clayton Arcade, and he is a, a stately looking fellow. A bit older, a touch older. Um, certainly not old enough to look like a, you know, look like he's too old to father children, but not in the spring of his youth by at all. You would guess he's probably somewhere around early 50s. He will raise his glass, and uh, he will welcome all the guests to the party with a very, with a very, uh, a very good toast. To thank those who came, who had prepared, who made preparations of this last year. He will praise Kinnis and Algiers and all of the domestics and the six guards uh, that will keep this place safe. As he kind of looks across the way, kind of nodding at each of them. He will call, he'll make a few petty remarks, uh, a funny anecdote, um, and as he raises his glass for the toast, all of you drink your effort present. Mm. I trust. You don't have to. It's up to you. To the solstice, he says. And there's kind of a, and there's a murmur in the room. To the solstice, everyone drinks their effort best. Not down it, but she would definitely take it. Oh, they drink all of it in one fell. Drink. Oh, is that what everyone around Everyone them? has, then, yes. Yeah, she... Let's do it. Yeah. All right. Um. And with that, the music starts. Lord Clayton Arcane and his wife will come down the stairs. <laughs> everyone places their masks on their face. The lights are dimmed as Kinnish and Algiers kind of he lowers what he lowers one of the uh, heavy candelabras of candles and begins to blow them out, and then suddenly this greatly well lit ballroom turns into this <clears throat> place of bronze and golds and browns and dark shadows as uh, the masquerade ball is now on. <laughs> The, uh, the domestics walk around the interior of this place lighting these candles upon candelabras to give some light. There's no light coming from outside. But uh, the entire ballroom begins to glimmer and glow with candlelight. The air smells sweet. <laughs> Elisa's going to attempt to sidle over to Harper. And she's going to point out uh, Genevieve's sash. Hmm. Nods. And uh, we'll keep an eye on that. 
then she'll step back over to Domina. Fair enough. Of you, the one that is most difficult to, of, of your number, the person that is most difficult to find is Terwin Forrester. Kristen Blue as he is. But uh, finding one another should be relatively simple. Trivial, in fact. Trivial test, that is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if anybody makes their way near me without other people, <laughs> I'll try to signal them in some way to speak, but. Signal who to speak, I'm sorry. Any of these people? Well, it looks like, I mean, from where you're at, there are five. Other guards dressed in blue. Oh, they're all huddled around this one area? No, they're kind of spread out. A few are on the, the tall sleeping stairs looking down. A few are amid. The few are kind of on the periphery of the people. Uh, one is at the door and appears to and, and is by their lonesome. But they're all in pairs except for the one near the door. <clears throat> Where do you want to position yourself? You want to try and find this new guard. I mean, mm-hmm. I wanted to position myself at the door to make sure that I saw all the people come in. I was hoping I wouldn't have to roll for that, but I guess no, I'm fine. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, that's what I was trying to do, was position at the door, and then after that, I'm going to try and find out where this new guard is. So, speak to the guards in that case? I mean, if we're allowed. Certainly, you may speak to each other. Yeah. You're guards, after all. Well, that's what I'm, I'll say, when, when you know, I'm, I'm, I'm here to assist, where, where would you like me posted? Try to figure out who the commander is, basically. Oh, I see. But I'm going to use that as my guise to figure out where this uh, Athena is. Or Oh, the man says, <laughs> Alfie's not arrived yet, he says. Uh, oh, okay, I was told that. She is, he is constantly Tommy. Yes, he's your master of arms. That's, that would make sense, yes. Not the master of arms. Oh. It's dirge. He oh. says, he points toward this older looking, very old looking gentleman who's, what well, he's got a, basically a, 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 a wooden cane with this, uh, with this hound's head up on it. He's leaning up on it. He's dressed in these long robes and has kind of a short beard and long white hair. He has the look of a soldier. He's got a thousand mile stare. He kind of, like, when you look at him, you kind of get this kind of, it's like he's looking, he's always, he's always watching or in a situational awareness. So Alfie is the other guard. Alfie is the other god, he confirms. That's dirt. He is the ma- he is the master of God. Uh, but Alfie Alfie's is late? Always tardy. Always tardy, the guard says. How does he just, how does he still have a job? <laughs> Roll over <a> test. <laughs> this test will be, uh, I have filled everything. What's your what is your risk what's your such a class? Uh I'm gonna risk it. Oh yes, so this will be hard. Hold on, but he's outside of my social class, right? He is, yes. That's only to charm. Nice. So I, I, I don't get it for room. So hard. Whoa, 37. So 37. Oh, 29. I finally succeed something. <laughs> Four rolls later. <laughs> Not only you fail rolls, you make me fail rolls. <laughs> you critically <laughs> fail rolls. Yes. Yes. Was it mine? Yeah. <laughs> Alfie is... <laughs> the, the guard kind of leans in, speaking in a low whisper. He's the, Alfie has uh, ties <coughs> to the dancer's father. A local woodcutter. Uh, well, this Delilah, yes. Yeah, it's Delilah has... <coughs> Does that give him? I mean, that doesn't make any sense. The Lord should still can. My opinion too. But ah. who would you say? Again, but uh, all right. Well, I'm gonna move over there. It looks like there's nobody even guarding that. Uh, Just stand at the door. Should be fine. I got expecting any trouble tonight. The guards don't even. And now I'm just gonna be like. Yeah, you walk time. away, and the guards don't even seem to know about anything. Or maybe they do. Maybe they're just not telling you. Um, I'll try to position myself between the room and the terrace where people will be walking through the house. It's about 7.10 p.m. And the minstrel's oblivion have begun to play their music above in the minstrel's box. But walking across... Is it near Rosalia, by the way? Mansfield? 
Sure. I meant to ask this. So, in this case, we've got um, Elisa and Terwin near Domino. Where does that leave Jonathan? I'm going to go to a, uh, a balcony somewhere that uh, hopefully has a view down to the docks. Like, that oversees the city. Yeah, absolutely. So I can watch to wait for Warren to fly the uh, the blue cloth. Okay. When yeah. that happens, I'll know what to do. I'll just act as if I'm getting air. Okay, and sure enough. Sipping a drink. At this... So you're near Rosalia? Sure. Yeah. So she's just making small talk with you, trying to blend in. And just, you know, pleasant talk about your travel here. And, oh my yeah. gosh, you those mountains, I can't imagine like, going by through it. Mm. And then you see this man taking long strides across the room, and he pulls off his mask. Without a doubt, it is better Cobain. My dear, he <laughs> says. Barrister Mansfield. May I introduce myself, he says. This is the only one to take off his mask. Vela Cobain. Yes, I know, the baritone of Belagain, she says. Your songs have been played in this city since you arrived. There is a there is a bit of there is an exchange there, and uh, he immediately asks her to dance as the music begins to grow. That guy has got something real. <laughs> she will, of course. <laughs> She will agree to you. Agree to you. She will politely agree. <laughs> Lord Clayton Arkay and his wife are are mingling among the guests, and you can see the domestic still passing out glasses of effervescence. And Lady Gabrielle Arkay, every time a, every time a glass is empty, she has one immediately in her hand. She never not and she never not has a glass of effervescence in her hand. Is immediately restored. Where's, where's said brother during all this time? Is he... Sir Genity? He is talking with Dirge the Younger. <clears throat> They're up on the top balcony. In fact, you can see Jonathan passing behind them as he goes to take the air outside. Hmm. They are not, of course, Genity nor, nor Dirge the Younger are wearing masks. It would be, uns- it would be unseeming. What I have seen... Jonathan come in? Uh, no, because you're with Domina and uh, Terwin. He was tardy. Very tardy. What I was uh, about to say is uh, I'm going to try and give an opportunity to um, Elisa to uh, get away since we're both next to Domina um, and ask Domina to dance. Oh, this is very kind of you to ask Master Terwin. But I must admit, I have, I must meet R.H. Block while I'm here. Forgive me, perhaps later this evening we can dance? Uh, yes, uh, of course. Uh, you know what he's, you know he's wearing, maybe we can look for him. Love to help you out. Hmm, a game. I like this. Yeah. But please, she locks her arm in yours. I know that Master Block is one to drink a lot. He has bad teeth, and he's dressed a bit slapdash. Where do you think you would find him? She looks among the crowd. Well, you know, I think if someone were to laugh at maybe somebody not knowing quite how to walk, quite how to talk, they might smile while they laugh, eh? Certainly, yes. And you can see their teeth. Ah! Let's, uh, let's go and let's mingle, right? Shall we take a stroll? Yeah, we shall. The two of them stroll through the party, and there is some dancing happening at this point. Obviously, Rosalia Mansfield is dressed, is dancing with Vetter Cobain, and he is every bit the gentleman, as he knows when to dip her, where to put his feet, how to dance, and she, too, seems to understand, and you can even see a smile kind of widened across her face more and more broad as he is literally sweeping her off the floor as they are dancing among the party guests and they fin- and they're of course they're you know, finessing their dance. Can I can I see the captain? Uh what oh Wolfgang? Yeah. Wolfgang is uh talking with uh one of the guards. He's not seemingly paying attention. Oh okay. So <laughs> you were hoping for Telsir. Oh uh, so 
You mentioned uh, that there were a number of like <clears throat> religious paintings and such. <clears throat> there is, yes. As a reverent upbringing, I, I would actually quite be interested in taking a look at those. Oh, yes. Harper, you walk over into the gallery, and so the music dies down, and you can see this slender, short-looking Ferris semi-man. He is dressed with what apparently is this long blue scarf that dangles at his side, this tall, this kind of long black overcoat and shirt, <laughs> and these tight pants that are cropped just above his ankle with these with these ankle boots, and they're tightly laced with brass buckles, and he, with his fingers, he is in a interesting <laughs> Hmm. Forgive me, I did not see you there, he says, as he has a bottle of red wine in one hand. Hmm. No, no, no offense, Tegan. Uh, just come to enjoy the art. I don't think we've had the pleasure before. Uh, I am Harper Clavinger. Armani Warhol, he says. He smiles, and he has really bad teeth. Oh, man. His breath is pretty bad. <laughs> uh, he hands the bottle to you. I'll take a swig. Okay. And I remain red. Huh. <laughs> Between us girls, I, uh, <laughs> I nicked it from uh, Lord, uh, Arc <laughs> Lord Arcade's uh, wine cast up front. I didn't think he would mind. <laughs> he hasn't noticed yet, so he probably won't later. <laughs> uh, I must admit, I am a bit of a novice at these sorts of things, but they do intrigue me. They are quite beautiful. Uh, yes. I, I hear that you are quite adept at these things. Uh, would you tell me anything about it? He will go on and he will spin quite a yarn about yeah. some of about one painting in particular. And he says, "Take a step forward and look at the way the brush strokes are. Take a step back now, take in the entire painting. Like you can tell, like he's clearly like trying to to speak large and loud about this painting. Mm -hmm. um, Roller scrutinized test. This test is secret." <clears throat> Scrutinize. Well, I normally have a 43. And I rolled an 09. Keep it. I will keep that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I do better. You notice that as he's talking to you, he keeps looking back toward Dirge the Younger. And the name is a bit of a misnomer because Dirge the Younger is probably the oldest gentleman in the room. Easily 70 winters. Mm -hmm. He keeps looking toward Dirge as he's talking. His eyes keep passing, looking past you as he's looking toward Dirge and Dirge and Surgeon and the Copper are, of course, chatting across the way. You can see them clearly through there because they're the only ones without masks. Mm. Mm. Yeah, um, so I'll, I'll note this, but I won't, I won't really point it out, but uh, basically, since he's wearing blue, I'm going to keep on trying to engage him and, and keep on talking to him and, again, see if I can suss him out a bit further. Sure. <coughs> you continue kind of interacting with him. Yeah. At this point, Domino says, That must be him. You were right. Look. He points across the way, and you see this man wearing the... Uh, his, his clothes look a bit rough and disheveled. Uh, the man is guffawing and laughing very loudly. He has a, uh, a mug of something in his hand. He's very boisterous. In fact, his mask, his mask it appears to look like uh, it's kind of halfway off his face with his long nose and his kind of laughing eyes as he's kind of slicking back his thinning hair. <laughs> that's that's him. Master Terwin, whatever would I do without you? You are the perfect gentleman and a, and a, and a, and a, and a, a perfect companion for this evening. Oh, yes. Well, uh, glad that I could be of service. Yeah. Well, I am... Once again, I am sorry, but I promise you will have your dance. Oh, sure. She lightly brushes her hand against your shoulder, which is giving the the kind of yeah. Kind of, you can feel it kind of like that. You can feel your stomach kind of turn butterflies for a mere moment as she walks away, and she will actually walk up to uh, R. H. Block, and they will chat a bit. They begin to chat, and he's kind of leading. She's leading him away from the ballroom. Meanwhile, outside, Jonathan, the music kind of is dies down as you're outside on the balcony. And from here, at the heights of Kaelturian at night, you can already see that there is quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of celebration happening in the streets. Uh, you can hear the sounds of people outside beyond the manor, similar styled homes with similar parties going on. 
you could see a cavalcade of uh, coaches still outside as the uh, coaches and servants are sharing drink and smoking pipes and doing what they would do. But even from here, beyond the great stone bridge that, that kind of adjoins the two bluffs of the upper city, you can see down below into the harbor where you already you can see the Madeline, the largest ship in the harbor, in fact. No ship of its size or kind. It's still in the slip. The sun has set at this point. Come on, Warren. I'll just say, sort of under my breath, as I continue to watch and <clears throat> nervously sip my drink. Down at the docks, and that's when I told him he can go fuck himself. As the sailors are basically sitting around with you, and you kind of roll over a big barrel up on its side, and they've got several bottles sitting out there. As they've been very, very friendly and affable, the men that the the, fault, the men and women that uh, Jonathan Vander picked among the sailors clearly were promised to con they were promised that they continue celebrating the solstice. Will you partake in their celebrations? Oh yeah. <laughs> so or never says no to a drink. <laughs> let's let's assume it's been probably a couple hours. So go ahead and make first a routine toughness <laughs> test. Okay, routine toughness gonna is going to be eighty-one percent uh, chance to succeed. <laughs> and that's a ninety-nine. <laughs> oh, oh my god! A critical failure. So it's like, oh my god! I had a, I had a no, two percent chance to lose that roll, or two percent oh. chance to critically fail that roll, and I did it. Lauren, two percent <laughs> chance. You know what? Why not? Donuts. That's why we can have nice things like. Shits. I never turn away a drink. So Warren, <laughs> it's probably that first hour that you have become. <laughs> In, intoxicated, obviously. Um, you gain one corruption. Uh, yeah, that penalty, <laughs> and please. you will uh, suffer. Marker. Marker. Uh, yeah. Thank you. There you go. Oh, there's no music up here. There's plenty of. Uh, <laughs> plenty of screaming and laughing and aggression as you suffer. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. 3, 10 plus 3, physical peril. Oh, that's not so bad. 5, 6, okay. 7, 8. You get 10 physical peril. 10 physical peril, okay. And during this time, you have plus 3 your damage threshold because you you drunk. And since I am carousing, um, I have the carousing talent. Uh, I'm going to gain, this time, plus 10 base chance to intimidate. So you're a mean drunk. <laughs> I'm mean tonight. <laughs> so I wanted to go to that fucking party. Here's what here's what we're gonna do. I'm going to determine the hour in which you're gonna raise the blue flag, but I'm not gonna tell anybody. I'm simply gonna mark it down. Okay. It's either gonna be it's gonna be between the hours of six to ten. When whenever whenever Warren remembers. <laughs> okay. Alright. This is the best plan ever. <laughs> Meanwhile, it's gonna burn this shit. back at the party. Uh, so, uh, one thing I wanted to do um, is I wanted to try and keep uh, myself somewhat near Domina, but also uh, looking at the party so I can watch. But so, if that's possible, yeah, absolutely. Um, so I you want to hover? You want to hover around Domina? Uh, I want to give her enough space that she knows that I'm not trying to interfere with her business, but uh, also to make her think I'm doing the job she thinks I'm doing, like uh, you know, being there as her. her are you uh, observing? Do are you trying to observe Domina for uh, as one of your suspects? Yeah, um, I'm wanting to to just be around, but I'm not trying to. Okay. Uh, Interfere. interfere with Yeah, that's a, that's a sh that's when you try to shadow in yes. this case. So yes. you were shadowing, which is a stealth test. Awesome. And this test is a uh, secret. It's a secret stealth test. Secret. I'm awesome. I got a stealth. secret. I got a secret. Da -da 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 -da. Um, so it is a 37. And I rolled an 89. 
doing really well. Though. It's secret, though. You don't you know the difficulty. It? You gotta keep it? Uh. Green, <laughs> roll, green, roll. Do it. Okay. I'll, I'll say this for what you're rolling, but. It's, it's, right. it's, it's the only other person at the table that rolls more critical <laughs> value. <Yeah. laughs> How about a 35? What's your chance to succeed? Uh, 37 normally. Do you want to keep that? Uh, or you have I to. Have I have to. That's right. But it's better. Okay. It is better. So yeah, it could have been 66. So uh, from your perspective, Elisa, what are you doing? So since Domina is pretty much latched onto Terwin and seems to be... She's not anymore. Well, but she's pretty much like, oh, yes. I have Terwin here. I would she, agree with that, yes. Yeah, Elisa kind of slides away at that <clears throat> point because she's already proved, oh, I'm here at Domina's behest. Yeah. And uh, she's gonna slide over kind of to where Dirge and Genity are, mm-hmm. and it just like be drinking her drink and look kind of, kind of like she's done with all this social crap. Like she looks like she's uncomfortable in her dress. She's just trying to uh-huh. act like, God, I'm tired of this crap yeah. right in front of them, just to see if maybe that makes her fit in a little bit more. Oh, roll the disguise test. This test is secret as well. Yeah. Makes sense. Lots of secrets at these things. <laughs> okay, so with disguise, I have a 52 because I do have a train. I don't think a 79 is going to do it. Um, you have to keep it or reroll? I do get a plus 20 with disguise tests against people of different social class. They are of a different social class, you're an aristocrat. So. Roll it again. Yeah, let's go ahead. Let's yeah. Yeah. I would ahead. strongly suggest we take. We probably continue past 10.30 tonight. I do not think interrupting this would be a good idea. As long as we can possibly get tonight. Well, that's a 10. So keep that? Yeah, I think I'll keep it. <laughs> she has to. <laughs> so, you kind of are, are, are near where um, where uh, Gen- Sir Genity Copper and Dirge the Younger are talking. And Sir Genity is not of an age similar to Dirge at all. I mean, Genity's probably in his 50s as well, much like the Lord Clayton and Arcane. They're mostly just grumbling about this entire affair. And she's um, looking uncomfortable passing mm, her corset yeah. and being like, really? Did I have to do this crap? <laughs> My lady, you hear come from behind you and it's Sir Genity. Oh. Uh, sir. May I help you with something? He says. Oh. No, it's, uh, it's quite all right. This is, um... This is not my normal uh, location, shall we say. Mm. I don't think we've had the pleasure of meeting. Uh, I'm Elisa. Elisa. <coughs> Maurice. <laughs> he, his eyes kind of perk up. Or his eyebrows perk up. Lady Elisa Marius. Indeed. It is, a, it is an honor to meet the daughter of... Uh, <laughs> the daughter of Cole. Yes, well, I've heard that a few times, but I've heard the opposite as well. <laughs> My brother speaks highly of you. He crosses his arm and then steps over. Shocking. Not necessarily speaking highly of him at all times. Wolfgang has his uh, faults, but uh, he knows how to read people. Well, must have said that it's nice that he says such things. Huh. However, never to my face. Ah, he smiles. <laughs> <clears throat> well, uh, I hope this is not too forward of me. I know we do not know one another, but I am uncomfortable here, too, to be frank. It's quite stifling in this place, isn't it? Secret I'm... masks and whatnot. I'd like to be able to see. In places such as this, when you have no other out, sometimes you must simply lean into it. He says. Lean too far, fall forward in this thing. Well, she looks at the overly wrought <laughs> dress. <she's in. laughs> well, then let us help support one another as he kind of pulls at the uh, clothing on himself as well. A dance, perhaps, to hold one another up. I will attempt, sir, but I pray for your feet. <laughs> <laughs> I must admit, Lady Marius, I was not born as well as you and your family. Uh, but uh, <laughs> My family wasn't as born as well as my family. <laughs> Well, then we shall be as, <laughs> then we shall dance about like jackanapes and look like stubborn asses among these blue bloods, nay? He well, smiles. Nay. If one must make an ass of themselves, it seems there should be two, yes? <laughs> he flashes his teeth with a smile. 
<laughs> the two of them will head out into the uh, into the uh, the dance hall at this point. Jonathan, from your viewpoint, the the, the blue slash sat cloth has not been raised up on the uh, up on the the, uh, the mast of the ship yet. I'll look at the uh, grandfather clock inside, assuming I can see it through the hull down. From the yeah, it, it is. It is only at this point, seven fifteen. Oh, it is early. All right, I will uh, continue waiting patiently. I'll start to like smoke and sort of mutter to myself as I uh, sit there. You can see <laughs> from where you're at, uh, Forrester. Uh, Domina takes RH Block by the hand, and they actually head out into the garden. Are you going to follow them? Uh, does she look my way? No. <sighs> uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You head outside and you can hear the crickets. And you're outside in the garden where you can see these tall, kind of freestanding pillars of white stone. And uh, RH Block and Domina kind of are, are near the fountain uh, that's softly burbling. It's just the two of them. You're kind of near the edge of the door as you walk outside. It's creeping. And uh, you can see that uh, she kind of reaches into the folds of her dress and pulls out these roots. And she gives them to the orange block. <coughs> he will look at it both ways and look back toward the garden party and look past you as clearly you haven't been seen or out here in the dark. And he softly begins to eat at the roots until he imbibes all three of them. Inside, interesting, Harper, from yeah. where you're at, you will forgive me, I... Uh, I must, I must, uh, I must speak to, uh, Dirge, the younger. Oh, oh well, thank you, thank you for all, uh, for, uh, for explaining so much to me. Of course. I really appreciate it. At this point, you can see that, um, you can see that he begins to walk towards Dirge, the younger, but he actually doesn't even stop to talk to him. Huh. Go ahead and make an awareness test. This test, because you succeeded your test before, this will be a routine test for you. <clears throat> Routine awareness will be a 53. I rolled a 52. He walks by Dirge, and with a quick sleight of hand, he yanks the keys from Dirge's waist belt and stuffs them into his pocket. And Armani Warhol continues walking along the way past him outside. That's sneaky. Hmm. He's a bit of a sneak thief. Yeah. As as this happens, from where you're at, uh, ba excuse me, I say Bannister, Banneker, you can see that like, you can see Rosalia begin to approach Lord Clayton Arcane out in the out in the uh, out in the ballroom, but he's kind of his attentions are turned away, and then Lady Gabriella kind of interrupts her rudely, and she is talking in low hushed tones of Rosalia and pointing her finger at Rosalia's chest. Clearly, uh, as Lady Gabrielle, you can imagine like the mother from uh, from uh, Arrested Development. <laughs> she's kind of oh, like awesome. that. She's holding up the glass, and as soon as she drinks it, it's empty. In other words, placing her hands by by a domestic very quickly. As she and Rosalia are kind of talking at this point. I'm picturing Archer as well, but it's the same actress. Yes. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. It's but, but Lady Gabriella R.K. Inter basically inter inter interrupts uh, Rosalia from approaching her husband, Lord Clayton, and as they are talking in brusque, hushed tones. Nobody seems to be paying attention. And you can see that uh, Vetter Cobain has already kind of been, has been, is on the periphery of the dance floor. He's kind of, kind of he's kind of rubbing his, his, uh, his spade-like uh, beard, and he's, he's entranced with Rosalia Mansfield. <clears throat> but makes no means to interrupt the, the discussion. Only you can see this because you are a guard. You are watching very closely. The others are going to intermingle among the others. Yes. Uh, I'm going to go find uh, Banneker and uh, I'll whisper to him uh, Warhol just nabbed the keys from Dirge. <clears throat> and then <clears throat> we turn your attentions away from yeah. what's happening between Rosalia and Lady Gabriella at this point. Oh. <clears throat> so, uh, I'll take care of that. Or as I point to Rosalia, you take care of uh, 
Warhol. As you wish, master. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do? Banneker? I'll, uh, I'll find Dirge and explain. You're going to find Dirge? Yeah. Okay. You begin to go toward Dirge, and at this point, you can see Domina is standing on the edge of the dance floor, and R.H. Block is, like, point. He's actually in an argument an argument, R.H. Block is, with Armani Warhol. He shoves Armani backwards, and R.H. Block protests, saying a woman complained that uh, Armani had groped her. And there is this, uh, this kind of, this, this, basically this kind of, like, not a fist fight, but this yelling match kind of breaks out uh, among the group. And a bit of panic begins to arise among them as the dancing kind of stops. People begin to kind of gather around the two of them. As R.H. Block, this drunken fellow, uh, and Armani are in the middle of this this fighting, this yelling match in the middle of the dance floor. Uh, <clears throat> I will stop and move back towards the Lord. <laughs> as as our as you can see that uh, R.H. Block kind of shoves Armani, and Armani staggers backward. And the bottle he had taken earlier kind of breaks and rolls across the floor, and the keys are kind of like scattered amid the crowd. Nobody seems to notice, save for you and for you. <laughs> As this is happening, <laughs> all at the same time, uh, still, uh, Yuki quickly, Genity kind of breaks away from you. Forgive me, my lady. As he breaks away from the dance with you, um, <clears throat> Elisa, and tries to break the fight. Oh, no, she follows. Oh, okay. <laughs> Get back! What are you doing, madman? Show where you're at! Now, did I see any of the events that were happening before this? Yes. Okay. You saw the events I narrated to you. Okay. That's all you have seen. Do there are so many everybody's... people at this party, the events I narrate directly to you as a character <laughs> are the you events that you directly see. <laughs> just to kind of be clear here. Oh, cool. If you heard an event that I narrated to somebody else and didn't include you in, then you did not see it, you did not hear it, you did not witness it. Because there are so many people here in this hall, this is a way to keep things kind of okay. consolidated. But you see, Domina kind of steps back, watching what's happening at this point. Uh, at that point, I will uh, approach her and just kind of let her know I'm there. Oh. Master Forrester, I didn't see you there, she says. I hope your business went well, but uh, I, know it, I figured you could use an idea. My business, she says, kind of inquiring. Yeah, you said you wanted to talk to him, so I left you alone a bit. Oh. Oh, yes, of course, she says. Of course. How foolish of me. And she kind of kind of faints with her hand and kind of locks her arm back into yours, even though yours isn't already locked out. Yeah. So, this fight is, I mean, it's not a fist fight of any means. It turns into one shove, and then like it's broken up immediately. And uh, R.H. Block is kind of basically cordoned off to one corner by Dirge the Younger. And Armani Warhol is uh, taken by the scruff of his clothes outside by uh, Sir Genity Coppers. They're having words on the front porch. And the conversations kind of are not nearly as loud as before, obviously, because there's a bit of unrest. But... As this is happening, as this all happens, and the clock strikes 7.45, Vetter Cobain attempts to lift the spirits of those in the room. As he, <coughs> as he stands upon the minstrel's box, on the very edge, on the lip of it. Like, not where the minstrels are at, but he stands up on the edge. Lady Rosalia Mansfield. I have been smitten with you since you have arrived. You are an object of great beauty and composure. No other could compare to you at this party. If you will so permit me, Lady R.K., I shall now sing a sonnet that I have composed here and now for Rosalia Mansfield. Lady R.K. is, uh, she looks toward Rosalia with daggers in her eyes. You can see this, Elisa. But as to not cause any further embarrassment as a fight almost broke out the party, she says. Proceed! And with that, Vetter Cobain will 
begin a sonnet. She eyes me like a Pisces when I am weak. I've been locked inside your hot shape box <laughs> for weeks. I've been drawn into your magnetar pit trap trap. I wish I could eat your cancer when you turn black. And then the band begins to pick up a blue behind him and he says, Hey! Wait! As uh, Rosalia is turning around at this point and trying to leave the party. <laughs> I've got a new complaint! Forever in debt to your priceless advice! And he continues this story, he continues this song with Oblivion playing behind him as he is singing this sonnet live, almost like he's, almost as if he was penning it live from, you know, just out of thin air. Mm -hmm. But it is rather good. <laughs> I, I turn to, uh, I turn to uh, Domina and I say, You think she can't find a better man? <laughs> uh, Rosalie just kind of like she's not really sure how to act I mean she's keeping her composure as she's got her hands kind of kept on her, her robes like this and she's kind of nodding like she's kind of listening into a story and Vetter, and, and Vetter Cobain is so enthralled with her as he speaks with greater and greater bravado as you hear the baritone of Belligan as his voice Dominates this entire ballroom. It smells like something. As he says, it smells like something. It smells like something strange. Um, still, however, Harper, from your perspective and from your perspective, uh, uh, Banneker, the keys are still on the floor. No one seemed to have found it yet. Can we? Can I pick those up? Absolutely. You snatch up the keys. The question is, will you return them to Dirge the Younger? He already has uh, R.H. Block in the corner, and wagging his finger at him. And outside, you can see Sir Genity Copper with uh, Armani Warhol giving him a firm finger wagging, too, for interrupting the party. Yeah, I'll take him back to Dirge. Okay. As the this... And I'll explain the situation once, once I'm allowed to. Okay. He's, uh, listen to me, he says as he's shaking his stick at uh, R.H. Block. We've had enough of your drunken antics around here. If you don't behave yourself, I shall take this like a switch to a babe and beat your ass out this door and embarrass you in front of everyone here. <laughs> he says, and R.H. is clearly like, not only is he inebriated, his eyes are crossed. Like, his eyes are dilated. And, and he's having difficulty standing on his own feet. He's having difficulty forming words. Yes, what it is it? Yes, what it is it? Uh, excuse me. Yes, what is it? Dirge turns around with his stick holding it in hand like such as cane with the, with the uh, hound's head upon it. I'll uh, move to the side so that the other one can't hear me. Yo, keys. He reaches toward his waist. Must have dropped them. You didn't. <laughs> I came off of Armandi during that fight. Off who? Armandi. Armani. Sorry, Armani. Is it Armani Warhol? That Ferris Simi? Yes. I don't know when he got them from you, but. The eyes don't lie. We're going back to your master now. He takes the keys. Good work. He takes them and we'll begin to, uh, he'll begin walking outside. At this point, you can see this young man kind of come in from behind the kitchens, dressed in all blue, fixing his cape just so, pulling up his leggings and tying it at the waist. <coughs> it's clearly the sixth guard. <laughs> you see this as this is happening. You specifically, Banneker, see this as this is happening. <clears throat> As Dirge is heading toward the front of the door, the clock strikes eight. Boom, boom, boom. Eight times it rings in the hall as the dancing continues. And still at the ship, at this point, uh, unfortunately, Warren is still in deep in his cups with the, uh, with the sailors. The sun has set, and the blue swath of cloth is sitting somewhere nearby, but you're not really paying too close attention because you 
critically failed that uh, <laughs> that uh, intoxication test. <laughs> Jonathan, back from your viewpoint, shoo, camera pans in up toward uh, the RK estate. It's eight o'clock. You can hear the clock striking, but nothing has happened yet. I'll find a. Uh, I'll send a courier down to tell them to, with a message. And I'll find. I'll run outside. Like I'm okay. As you are running outside, downstairs, and you pass, you pass beside Sir Jenny Copper and uh, Dirge the Younger, uh, as they've got Armani Warhol cornered off the stairs, and they're talking to him. And you can see some of the uh, coachmen kind of gathering around. Uh, you see a messenger approaches the door and is talking to, speaks very discreetly for a moment handing uh, Rosalia Mansfield a small note. Uttering no words, he simply turns it out and begins to walk back toward the city. Is everything all right, my lady? I'll say as I kind of swoop up next to her as, indiscreet, as discreetly as possible. Of course, everything is fine. I'll tell you more about it later, she says, kind of nodding, indicating that uh, she will talk about it. <clears throat> Nothing about the business at hand, then. Nay, let us find Lord Clayton Arcay. Come with me, please. Grant me a moment. I need some air. I'll be back in one minute. Of course. I say as I, st- as I rush my way outside. Do you want to stop the messenger who was there? Yeah, I'll take okay. him if he's still outside. He turns around. A young page, a courier. Yeah. Oh. Yes, sir. Five pennies to get a uh, to get a message to that unusual ship down there. Five pennies. How about a shilling? <laughs> he smiles. That's more like it. <laughs> what word shall I ferry for you, sir? Tell Sarah? them that uh, the gift giving ceremony has begun, and for them to <clears throat> begin their uh, their preparations immediately. Begin their <laughs> preparations immediately. Of course, sir. For yeah, shilling. Now. I use the word now and I'll slip in my shilling. Yeah. As fast as my feet shall take me, although, to be frank, the walk here from the lower city was quite arduous. At least it's all downhill. Yes. Definitely a shilling's walk. <clears throat> here, I'll give him another three pennies on top of it. You know, for the holidays. Oh, yes. Go ahead and make a uh, charm test. This test is trivial for you. Right. Pink is first. Let me know your degrees of success. So take your <laughs> tens die and add your fellowship bonus to it. If you succeed. 78. I got a 39, so 49, plus. 59, 69, 3 plus. Yeah. So you don't so you so so you don't do it by tens, you just take your tens die. So you roll oh, a 39, you roll a 3, and then add your fellowship bonus. Oh okay, so seven. 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 Okay. Yeah, okay, that'll move by seven. It's good. So, back from where you are at, <clears throat> excuse me, back where you're at, Elisa, where you last left off, you, uh, of course, Sir Genity is no longer here. He is, uh, he is outside with uh, Dirge the Younger. And you can see they're kind of dragging, they're dragging um, <clears throat> Armani Warhol by his scarf outside to have a firm talking to so she is not going to go where they're talking, but she will stand kind of like at the top of the stairs near the door. Mm-hmm. Kind of like she's waiting for Genity, but she's giving him the space. Okay. Like she's still interested in speaking. Yeah, but she's going to listen in as best as possible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Kind of shut the door behind her so it kills some of the noise. Sure. <laughs> There's a... Clearly there is a... Armani is. They, they call him a sneak thief and a rabble rouser and a rogue, and they're lucky they don't drag him out and throw him in the water and tie, r- tie bricks to his feet as they're putting the fear of uh, the fear of the RK in him. Uh, Armani will uh, protest, saying that he did not take the keys, that uh, he saw nothing, and that he is an admirable, he is an honorable Pharisee man. And he would never do such a thing or dishonor Lord and Lady R.K. in their own household. And how dare he be? You know, how dare the blame be laid at his feet for keys that likely fell out of Dirge's pockets? And he even goes as far as to say, you know, you're a man of some age. Perhaps you simply misplaced them. And this angers Dirge even more, <laughs> as there is a bit of a, a bit of a going on there. 
<clears throat> However, uh, upon this, uh, you can see that uh, that that uh, Jonathan Vander quickly kind of comes back into the party and joins with uh, Rosalia Mansfield, the barrister, as they head to speak to Lord Clayton R.K. So we just all go, so, oh, yeah. Master <laughs> Vander, I don't think we've had the pleasure, Lord R.K. says. The pleasure is all mine. Mistress Mansfield. Master R.K. Uh, may I retire to your drawing? I have some things to see to our agreements. Maybe we can speak later, but I need a place to concentrate. A place of privacy. It's something urgent. Lord R.K. can I nod. You may see you to my personal drawing room on the second floor. Just head up those stairs to the right. Uh, be careful not to dawdle into the children's room too far. They are asleep. These children keep a godly hour. <laughs> Lord R.K. says. Barrister Rosalia Mansfield nods. Forgive me. She says to you, Jonathan, and she will quickly dart up the stairs and in and away from the party. Rosalia Mansfield, you all can see, is gone from the party at this point. Hmm. <laughs> oh, uh, if is there is, is Harper near me still? He is. Yes, absolutely. Harper is just within a few, a few, a few yards of you. You kind of meander through the crowd, and still, the candles are dim, and still, the people are masked. And there's, and, and they brought out finger foods and, and such the domestics. And the brother have not come back. They're outside on the front porch. Uh, I, I, I think the keys were part of the distraction. Probably need the little. Perhaps. No. <laughs> All right. I'll steal it. That's what I would do. All right. As I'll uh, meander kind of nearby, like shadowing the, the Lord as best as I can, even though it's not my forte, I figure with enough people around. Shadowing Lord Clayton Archive? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and roll a secret stealth test. Secret, secret. <laughs> Normally I have a 40%. I rolled a 45. Keep it? I will. Okay. A better than average roll. That's right. Maybe you kind of found. meander through the crowd watching. What of yourself? Banneker. What are you doing at this point? Uh, I'm going to roughly do the same thing. This kind of... You need not sneak, though. Yeah, I'm not going to sneak. I'm just going to shadow him as much as I possibly can. S stay near Lord Clayton Arcade. Yeah. Uh, after knowing that uh, the other two are outside now, <laughs> yes. and that new guard is here. So you're kind of keeping almost like, even though you're kind of obviously in front of Lord Clayton Arcade, you were staying to the crowd and not be seen. Right. Making some small talk, perhaps eating some finger food. Right. But that brings us back to uh, this brings us back to Elisa from where you're at. Armani is not let back inside. Uh, Dirge the Younger will stay outside, the but, but Surgeon Eddie Copper will come back inside. He fixes his blue sash once again in his waist and walks in. She just he stands closed. there, she's got a, a drink, and she's watching. My lady. Kind of a slight smirk on her face. Sorry for that uh, interruption. I thought for a moment we would get uh, some time to speak about these most uncomfortable and unfortunate events. You apologize for the entertainment better than that that's inside. <laughs> Psycho Bane's a bit of blowhard. Uh, yeah. Never was a fan of his music. Seems the nicest way to put it. <laughs> yeah. I think his music is best for people that gutter and the grunge. <laughs> it's probably true. I can't say that uh, the racket is necessarily of my taste. Yes. Well, but, shall we? And she kind of nods towards going back in, so. Of course. <laughs> Perhaps we can uh, continue our conversation over a drink, as to so I not embarrass myself any further with my lack of footwork. Uh, well, <laughs> let's not embarrass both of ourselves, then. Maybe our drink. <laughs> Fair Maybe. enough. Maybe. Do you uh, take effervescent or something uh, a little more stout? Why would I take bubbles? <laughs> <laughs> My lady. <laughs> he will, you will approach a, a small bar area of a brass and mahogany bar, and they've got a number of spirits and other drinks, and you will say, fortified wine. 
a woman for myself. <clears throat> I like your choice. <laughs> to, to your health. Yours as well. <laughs> if we make it out of here alive, he smiles. <laughs> Are you keeping Jenny occupied at this point? Yes. Okay. All right. You get to lay on the charm. She's kind of trying. Uh, so he is of your social class. Yeah. Uh, and she's used to military men. That's so right. That this will be a root, sorry, an easy test for you. Easy charm. Easy charm? Yes. Alright. Uh, so my charm is a 52. Easy putting it to 72. I rolled a 13. Okay. So. Uh, you will keep <laughs> Sir Jandy Copper occupied for quite some time. <laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> where you are all at, you're kind of hovering around, kind of watching, and Domina just passes right by you, Terrawin, paying no, no heed or mind to you, and she approaches Lord Clayton Arquet when his wife is not looking. <laughs> Clearly, Domina Satine is not any sort of uh, threat, at least from Lady Gabrielle Arquet's eyes, because she's, she doesn't seem to interrupt or interject herself into the conversation. But uh, Domina is speaking with the Lord, and you can kind of hear, kind of saying, let's go somewhere quieter later tonight and talk. You can hear this from where you're at, Terwin. Yeah. Clearly you can hear this. Uh, well, uh, while she's busy doing that, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm going to look and see if any of the uh, Dufresne agency is nearby. Okay, you're looking around, and you can see... Jonathan Vander, absolutely. He's no more than just a son's throw away. And uh, I'll step over and I'll explain to him that uh, I'll just give him a brief overview of that. Speak. Satine, Satine took IH Block outside, gave him some moods, and uh, he was acting real funny after that. I've seen a man who can who can't hold his liquor, but if he's not, an alcoholic like she says he is, and Reach did something to him. Then she asked uh, the Count if, uh, not Count, Baron. Black Baron. The, the Baron, if, uh, Lord Baron. Uh, if the Baron, if they could uh, talk later tonight, it could all be, you know, just underhanded stuff, or it could be something less. Have well, you asked the Baron to speak with? Don't want to sit here. But, uh, <laughs> I'm starting to think she's more of a dealing drugs and you know other sorts of things and not not the murdering type, but I could recreational be, uh, amusements for right. me, I guess. But I could be wrong, so I'm gonna stick with her. Just if you could spread the word, because that whole thing with them fighting seems like a setup. I've been thinking carefully about. Uh, everything that's happened, and I indicated as much to Warren earlier. There was a, uh, there was a suspect that wasn't, uh, carefully considered. Who's that? I'll look upstairs to where the barrister had gone and down the hallway. Oh, keep us busy. Make sure we get it here. Oh, we'll keep us busy. Uh, I think Patsy is the word. Yeah. Gentlemen, you hear Lord Clayton R.K. at this point say, perhaps we should retire to my, uh, my wife has so affectionately called my man cave. And we shall, uh, take upon some brandy, a snifter, perhaps a cigar or two. Lady Domino, I would ask that you would join us. Domino will... Nod and smile. Sir Genity looks toward you. Do you think it would be an affront if I simply stayed here with you? He smiles, his smile twinkling. Ting! I don't see why that would be a problem. <laughs> Forgive me, Master Ak. I will uh, see to the uh, the lady guests. <laughs> <laughs> the lady guests or the lady. <laughs> Please, shall we retire, gentlemen? <laughs> <laughs> who will? Who will? Who will? Who will go downstairs? Uh, I'll go with the Lord. Lord. Terran will. Uh, but yeah, he says to Jonathan, he's like, 
If you could spread, if uh, you ask him real quick, are you going? <laughs> spread the word to anyone who remains. Of both of what I said and what you told me. I'll nod and uh, turn away and sort of like act like I'm approaching someone that I haven't seen yet and sort of try to hide my way into the crowd. So you'll go downstairs? No, okay. So at this point, we will assume that uh, those who are going downstairs will be Harper, yep. Terwin, uh, and um, upstairs will be, my apologies, um, Jonathan and Elisa. And are any of the guards moving downstairs? Banneker, no. Do you want to go? You want to go down? I'll go stand in front of the door. Okay. As absolutely, the clock strikes eight forty-five, and down below, as you all kind of filter down through this long, winding stone hallway, Lord uh, Clayton R.K. is kind of joking about, you know, Armani Warhol, he uh, he was looking at my paintings upstairs, but he did not know the most interesting in my collection is actually kept down here in my basements. And he takes you into what looks like a cellar, a literal cave that's been, comfort, that's been converted into a comfy room full of trophies, and unlike the paintings up above, which seem to display a manner of religious, uh, religious significance, down here, there are these incredibly perverse looking woodcuts. <laughs> and as you come this. downstairs, you found the fuck and, and it's only men downstairs <laughs> save for Satine. Yeah. And <laughs> immediately, Harper, your eyes are drawn to one as Lord Clayton Arcade is literally presenting it to the others who are down here. And what it looks like is a woodcut of King Cassander Malister being penetrated by a flintlock pistol by the Baroness Madeline Dupre standing atop a hilltop that looks like Durendal. Like, it's incredibly offensive. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, have been a purveyor, I suppose, of, uh, of the profane and the perverse for some time. A collector I have been for many, many years, and, uh, I knew that in Durendal these woodcuts were considered to be uh, illegal, but uh, a local man named Flint Hefner actually uh, was the one who hand carved these for me. <laughs> this is a bit of my collection. He, he begins to kind of pour out a bit of brandy for everybody too. <laughs> he uh, he speaks. You know, uh, I kind of half expected uh, Flint uh, to come to the party tonight and barge in and demand what he's owed. Uh, you know the way these local, these these lower city Rovanians are. <laughs> <laughs> He'll get his money in due time. He knows who I am. And uh, Taryn laughs a little bit too long, and then realizes it. Oh. Yeah, but he says, and then I was, you know, when I was uh, in the areas around Cahabro, I hunted down this uh, Zintish water panther. And you can see this very fearsome looking creature that's been stuffed and affixed like this. So it looks like some sort of bear, alligator, tiger, owl thing. You're not really sure how to put your finger on it. It looks like an amalgamation of creatures. A vitreal chimera of the Gothric lens. And he said, you see some other kind of profane woodcuts as well as paintings mm -hmm. he has in small wooden plaques. Small enough to hide, but the uh, the, the massive placard of King Cassander Malister uh, is split into like eight different pieces of wood and affixed together on the wall. The whole place is pretty dim and there's a, it's a, it's a, it's a rather offensive looking thing. Yeah. <laughs> by uh, all, by all means. I, I'm going to be looking cat, to the reactions of others. When they see these, like, I mean, pictures of rape and violence, like, yeah. it's. Got up their king. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like that's they uh, uh, they seem to be kind of laughing at this point, uh, as they're like, you know, I don't think that they really gave the Baron do, did give the Baroness her justice for the, the 
the breadth of her cocks, how much she's gonna fuck Aglador when this is all over. And uh, and there's some laughing among them, of course. And they're saying, oh, okay. she's gonna shoot his, she's gonna shoot that gunpowder right at the king's ass. The other one says, oh, but the king, you know, he's a Malister, he's an Aradain, he doesn't know anything. He's understanding the Ravanian ways, and there's kind of a bit of hubbub. They're talking, basically, they're not talking conspiracy, but just making kind of like, you know, jocular talk at this point. So, uh, so it's almost as if it's like uh, blitzball locker room talk. Sure, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. <laughs> but it's clear that everyone is not necessarily doing this just for for show. It's clear that Lord Clayton R.K. has gathered around him a number of people who believe alike as he does. And yet, still, you have not seen Rosalia present the papers to uh, to uh, to to Lord Clayton Arcade at this point. Yeah. Meanwhile, uh, upstairs, most of the people have the men folk have went down. The lady folk still kind of intermingling among the ballroom floors, save for Sir Jenny Copper, who is uh, leaning over a bar, leaning against the bar, and talking with Elisa. At this point, she has him virtually wrapped around her finger. Like the, the rumor of Jenny is the one with the blue, he's a blue sash on. And the other guards come in, and then you can see that um, the, the guard who was late kind of opened the front doors. And you see this slender looking, old, bespeckled fellow kind of st stagger in. You guys see, I don't, I'm downstairs. That's right. So, Jonathan, you see this happen. And you suspect it's probably been a half hour since the courier went down to the ships. So, do you want to stay down here and watch what's happening at the front doors, or you go outside and see if the sash has been raised? I better see if the sash has been raised as quickly as I can. Okay. Kind of rushing about. All right. You head upstairs and quickly take outside. And at this point, it is up on the clock as you walk right past it. You brush right past it. Um, it is about 8.45. Right. Sirs! Sirs! You hear, kind of at the bottom of the gangplank. I've come with a message! What do you want? The, bo the boy will, will, will tell you a story. He will tell you what he was told to say. And as he does so, he can hold his hand out in expectation. Oh, you want money? Okay, yeah, yeah, I get it. I gave him five breaths. Okay. It, it was a long walk, he says. I came all the way from RK Estate. That's almost like a mile. <laughs> Do I look like I'm made of money? <laughs> well, this big ship you have here, Captain Sir? Get your ass out of here. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, you're a mean drunk tonight. Get your ass out of here. <laughs> what do you want to do? Huh? I guess it's time, boys. Time to do it. Time to do what we're paid to do. Roll D6 cast die. That's oh. uh, good. A four. Okay. <laughs> so it'll take you four minutes to hoist that up. Meanwhile, up above. Uh, Harper, you're down below. Yes. Yeah. You are down below, we're too. She's the only one up. Elisa That's right. Uh, Elisa is in rapture. She's keeping Sir Jenny kind of at She is still her. watching. Like, she's oh, doing yeah. the whole, like, trying to seem aloof yeah. thing to him, but she's actually paying attention to what's going on. Around. That works. Uh, go ahead and make a hard scrutinized test, because diverting your attention is difficult, but you should certainly try to do it. Okay, scrutinize. I actually have two ranks in that, so I'm a 62. 33 will do it. That's a crit success! <laughs> Not only are you able to keep uh, keep his attentions, uh, you're also able to kind of watch what is happening. And clearly at this point, um, Lady Clayton R.K. is... So Lady Gabrielle R.K., I should say, is looking for her husband. She's not quite, she's looked in the service entrance, she's looked in the kitchen, she hasn't went downstairs yet. She hasn't went upstairs either, but she's kind of wandering around trying to find out what's going on. And you find that this younger, you could see that test, I believe. Yes. You find that the younger guard who came in a little bit later uh, was clearly wearing a fake beard and was without a doubt a woman. And she has been, she has sidled up 
to another woman who has a pale skin and she's dressed head to toe in a number of uh, loose, semi semi-transparent uh, bits of cloth wrapped around her arms, her waist, her head, and they're talking along with this older-looking, bespeckled gentleman. They're they're kind of talking in a nearby kind of alcove, out of eyesight beneath the stairs. Not hidden. They're hidden in plain sight. Nobody else seems to be paying attention, though. By the stairs. Are they anywhere close to, say, the dance floor or anything? Uh, not from here, no. You couldn't hear what they're saying. Okay. Is there people around us near the bar? Or... Absolutely, yes. Okay. So, Elise is going to lean into Jenny, and uh, she's going to say, you know, it's a bit <clears throat> loud over here for us to converse. Would you mind if we uh, slide to somewhere a little more quiet? Of course, my lady. He and smiles. She, yeah, and she's going to slowly, like, walk over towards the, the stairs area and see if she can listen to what the three of them are discussing. That's going to be an eavesdrop test, and that test is hard. All right. Not do, 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 do. easy. Uh, I'm uh, ranking that, so I have 52. Nice. And 11 will do it. Critical success. <laughs> wow. You hear everything. Here's what happens. I'll make it up for... All right, so Nick. we're just going to have a solo this whole thing. Everybody else. Yeah. So this, this I, guard... I mean, that's crit success. That's great. I know. This guard, who's clearly not a man, that's a woman, Right. says Delilah I'm going to go outside and set the fireworks at 945 when the fireworks go off that's when you're going to begin your dance that's when Lord Clayton our tail will get his final warning to pay father after that I'm out of here I'm leaving and we should get out of here and Althea you should get out of here too Fire. Althea nods, and the old bespeckled man says, You are tr a true Hefna. <clears throat> and with that, the uh, old bespeckled man will actually kind of look about, and he'll abscond away out the front doors. As this all happens. Outside, you see the blue flag rays up on the top of the ship, finally. About freaking time. Alright. I will uh, sort of casually try to work my way back inside and kind of kibitz into some random stranger's conversation. Mostly women. so Or all women, I should say. So yes. Fine. The one person I'm trying to avoid is Josephine Booger. You're trying to avoid her? Anybody but her. Ooh, okay, it's going to be a little tough because you are probably, you're the only man up here safe from searching any copper. So, to do so, you That's will need to again. make a stealth test. This test will be challenging. All right. Yeah, I don't. I don't necessarily need her to not see me. I just need to not have her not be the person I speak to. Yeah. All right. So let's see. Challenging still. Uh, it's gonna be a thirty-one. Yellow first. Yeah, it didn't work out. No, I'm not gonna reroll it. You try your best to kind of get away from it. Jonathan Vanda. You oh. hear Josephine say, "Wait, wait! I have something to say." She'll kind of trail after you. Oh boy. It is such a delight to find you here. I almost noticed you beneath your mask as she lifts the mask up and looks at your face and puts it back over you. <laughs> Isn't that against the rules? Well, aren't you dressed so fine tonight? As she kind of claps both of your shoulders like this, she even, you can smell you can smell effervescence on her breath. Oh yes, Josephine, I'm so glad to see a friend. Yes, it has it has been just a few days, but I have been thinking about you since we last spoke. I remember that prank you pulled when we were much, much younger. Oh. You know, the one where where you worked the kitchens and that's what you had to do because you couldn't afford the scholarship? Well, that is uh, sort of how that works, but, you know, I can now whip up a mean gruel for any occasion. <laughs> gruel? <laughs> it's been too long since I've had gruel. I'm sorry. I'm so out of sorts here. I so apologize, Josephine. I I know I can trust you as a dear friend. If I tell you something, can you promise me that you won't tell anyone else? Ooh, a secret, she says. You know I love secrets, Jonathan. She I need you up to, to you. As a good friend, I need you to keep this one, for I'm afraid something tragic has happened. 
Whatever for? She puts her, puts her hand over her mouth like such. She kind of staggers for a moment. A tremendous embarrassment will fall upon me, but the grand gift that we brought so far from Durendal has... Well, I'm afraid it has... Uh, I'm afraid it has been stolen. <gasps> she drops her wine glass at this point as it clatters up on the ground. All the women kind of turn toward her, including Sir Genity and, uh, and Lisa. Lisa looks I'm sorry, I must, I must go. I, I must <laughs> deal with this. I, I trust that I can... I'm, I'm relying on your discretion, I say, as I, like, hustle away. <laughs> Servant, please clean up this glass. Spoiler says, alert, I am not relying on this. <laughs> <laughs> she, will quickly, she will quickly find Lady Arcade. Gabriella RK, and she will immediately tell her what she heard from Jonathan Vander. Jonathan, where are you where are you want to do from here? I will just find my way sort of, uh, I will try to be like sort of scarce into one of the hallways, maybe over by the uh, the art gallery. Yeah, absolutely. The long, the long gallery. Yeah, just sort of Love it. look like Love I'm it. like milling about confused and upset. That's right. Husband. I have to take three corruption because I lied. <laughs> Fair point. <laughs> husband! Husband! You can hear a call from up, to up the stairs. You're kind of down one floor in the cellar. You can see that, Gabe, Gabe, that Lady Gabriella from your vantage point uh, where you're at Banneker. You can see her kind of in the threshold of the door. Look, Clayton Aramore Arcade. Come up here this instant. You hear her call. Uh, my lady, do you wish me to knock upon the door? The Madeline has been stolen. She says, "The what a line? <laughs> the ship, you fool! Go get my husband. Move past. Him. Get out of the way." She kind of pushes past you at this point. <laughs> As she comes to the door and open this door at once. Open, open now, husband. And of course, down here, the Lord, you know, of course, uh, Lord uh, Clayton Arcade. <laughs> he's laughing and he's clearly like they're all drink, they're all drinking from brandy. Snifters. I'm assuming probably at this point, you anyone who's down here in the man cave needs to probably make a routine toughness test <clears throat> to withstand intoxication. I think it's probably a fair time. It's been a, about two hours. Yeah. Yeah. I'm drinking strong and stronger liquor now. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go with the fail. No. no. Oh. Y'all gotta make up for my roll there. <laughs> you wanna re-roll this? I, I think I do. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. I need to keep my senses. What about yourself, Harper? I'll take it. Chicken! Mm. Bark, bark. Mm. Let's chase chicken. Success. Okay. 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 45. So Harper is unfortunately intoxicated. I'm known for getting drunk, so I feel like we shouldn't break that. That's a fair point. So, oh my god! <laughs> So that's 23 physical peril for Harper. Oh. Plus 3 damage threshold and 1 corruption. You are one, drunk. Two, three. Let's find myself a chicken. Uh, hey! I'm going to ignore his two skill ranks. Right. This, please forgive me. This woman is like a, like a crow or a, like a worst kind of nun. He comes at the door and says, Woman, what do you want? <laughs> and they kind of... What? 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 what, what? My gift! What? He begins to... He goes, gentlemen, please excuse me. And Dominus Satine stays down here with you all. Yeah. And he will go upstairs. Um, when... I'll, go, I'll follow as the dutiful... Uh, so <laughs> of course, are, right? When we heard the words, the gift and what... That's um, all you heard. Yeah, that's all yeah, you that's heard. Yeah, that's all we heard, but... I think that's probably enough to put it as together. A leader, yeah. as, as, as a leader, uh, having two ranks in leadership, yeah. I know the look yes. that subordinates give to yes. their leader when they're like, what now? Yeah. And I'm going to look around the room and see if anyone gives that look. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. They're all kind of like, what are we going to do now? What do we do? Okay, so Let's like, keep drinking! But but is there anyone that looks to anyone else specific? Because there's a very determined, there's a very specific look when they're like, no, they're just kind of confused at this point. Okay. One looks a little uncomfortable in his chair, and he grabs the brandy snifter and pours it. Uh, okay, so since nobody gave that look, I'm going to just turn to Domino and be like, say, what do you think of these? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> to, to, to the portraits? Yeah, like, uh, <laughs> oh my God. it's a bit 
suggestive, she says, kind of smiling. Uh, I did not expect this, I suppose, of I Lord Arcade. Who would want to do this? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I'm like, <laughs> I mean, I, I can approach it. The arts, but I'm starting to wonder if this is art. Well, <laughs> 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 I mean, unless yeah. art versus <laughs> pornographic. Yes, uh, <laughs> I say it certainly more than borders on the lure. And I don't think that the the covenant would look kindly upon Lord Arc being a churchly man as he and his wife are. Yeah, know, but you gotta admit that's a fine, mighty <laughs> fine looking so pistol right there. Because right. yeah. 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 so, I'm like rubbing the pistol somewhere. You're like, told you. Uh, so, <laughs> shall we go back upstairs? As I look to everyone, you know, like suggesting, like we shouldn't be down here. Yeah, I'm probably just gonna stay here. I think uh, Lord Clayton will be back. I'm sure. Just a bit of unruliness among his uh, <laughs> among his hired hands. He truly is a fool. A man is not very good at choosing the best of folk. I'm just and Algiers will take care of it. No big deal. And, well, I should say, Triple Ben, that I am not going to be the only one to drink this brandy tonight. Certainly somebody else will join me. Yeah! <laughs> um, Harper will happily drink. So that's a dish water, Panther? Another one says as they're looking at the uh, great stuffed trophy down here in the cave. Uh, Who is with a cave converted into a into a band? So sensing that she may have also been not too pleased with all the art and the Roll scrutinize test. Uh, okay. It's a secret one. Okay. Uh, forty one. Uh, fifty one. Want to keep it? Uh, I'm going to. Yeah. You can see that uh, as you're talking about these things, she's kind of inching a little closer to you on the leather couch. You feel that uh, that she is kind of being playful at this. That she's being jocular. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I'll look at her and I'll say, say with all these uh, paintings around here and all this uh, revel, you, you want to maybe go somewhere that's not quite on this level. We could go outside to the gardens, she says plainly. And she sees a slow smile. Yeah. What was the name of the woman that came down here with us? Was that Satine? Yeah, it's yeah, Domino. Yeah, that's who he's talking to. Oh, was it Domino? Domino. Domino. Yeah. That's all today. Let's. All right. She will lock her arm in yours. Yep. You all begin to come up the stairs. Meanwhile, up in the main hall, <laughs> there is a Lady RK is now trying to, they're talking with Josephine Booker, who's ordering the domestic and how precisely to clean up the glass and in a win her own way of uh, being offensive. Uh, you look around and then you can hear the music begin to pick up. Uh, with this, you see one of the guards uh, slip out into the gardens in front of Terwin and Domino. The door shuts as they're outside. Elisa's going to turn to Genity and she's going to say, I think I just saw uh, one of the guards I might happen to know. You stay here a moment. I'll be right back. She nods. Or he nods. Of course. <laughs> of course. Whatever you wish, my lady. She kind of, and she does the thing where she like trails her finger down his shoulder and she sure. goes walking out. And she goes to find Banneker. Okay. She came up and figured it out. Is there anybody else like near? No, not at this point. Okay. I'm downstairs getting drunk. That's right. The dancer, the, the guard is her sister. The, they said they're setting on fireworks and then they'll pay back father. Who apparently Clayton knows something to. The new god. I have to get back to Genevieve. Something's going to look suspicious, but that at least I know. Mistress Mansfield! Mistress Mansfield! You hear Lord Clayton RK okay, call out. Mr. Vander! I'll look around him nervously, like obviously. Like. I come to believe that uh, the gift from the Baroness has been stolen. A trespass. I'm afraid that that is the case. And I only wish they were 
or more brigandry, my lord. Come, come, I'll escort him out onto the balcony. Okay. We need to find we find we need to find Rosalia. This will not do. This will not stand. This will not stand, he says. Lady, woman, he says to his wife. See to uh, closing up this this party. See to ushering the guest up. Politely, politely, woman, he says. Clearly, Lady Gabriella Arquet is drunk at this point. And you can see she kind of gives him this kind of daggers in her eyes look directly at him. And she's, and, and of course, Lord Clayton Arquet at this point. He says, come with me, let's go. She's in my, she's in my drawing room. <clears throat> and you're now upstairs, the two of you. Taking him out to the uh, the balcony to show him, like, <clears throat> like he, we should be able to see the the blue flag like out over the river now. Correct? Yes, yes. Like, my lord, that cannot be an accident. I'll point out the. Uh, he looks down to it. It looks ship. politically. Uh, it, it, it looks politically inclined. Politically inclined. I've got everybody's loyalty in the Kaelitir. It's impossible. This must be some. Somebody must have followed you all here. This is silly. And yet, we simply must address to the issue at hand. I'll, I'll, whatever we can do, if I'll start to make my way back inside. Well, we'll have to let the city watch now. Let's, uh, can you see the closure of this party? Perhaps you can go speak to Rosalia. She's in my study just down, my drawing room just down the way. Go find her and we'll, uh, we'll close up the festivities. We'll talk about what we do next. Keep yourself somewhere safe, my lord. Of course, of course. And, and with that, um, mm -hmm. the party begins to, to wind down at this point. Um, this is all happening, uh, upstairs. And you're walking down toward uh, the study. And the hallway is pretty dimly lit, Jonathan. It's very dimly lit, in fact. Um, and that's when you notice something in the darkness. And you kind of, kind of, just kind of naturally grab a, you grab a, a nearby lamp that's burning on a nearby table. And you begin to draw it toward where the, bring it forward toward where the drawing room is. And you can see this figure kind of slumped over on the floor uh, with his, with blood pouring profusely between his fingers. And he's groaning in pain and uh, he's holding a sword kind of across his lap as you see Commander Tenenfelder. Like the commander that had led the other foray to here, the false foray. He, clearly out in pain, he lets out a guttural groan and kind of points across the hallway toward the study. His eyes are bloodshot. It's everything he could possibly do to keep his own guts inside as you realize he's being grievous. He's only grievously wounded, he's injured. His stomach is literally spilling out across the floor. Commander, do only I see this? Only you, you're the only one up here. Oh Jesus, oh Jesus. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, sir? I'll kind of like try to like put pressure on the uh, the wound, try to keep it from you bleeding kind of out. Push your hands up on it, and the blood's literally just kind of spurting between your fingers. He's bleeding profusely at this point. He's clearly injured. Who? Is, who did this? He can't even. He can't even get any words out as you see blood between his teeth. Good. Good. He's trying to kind of urge his hand, his, his sword toward the way, and he kind of lifts and drops it as you notice that his arm has been cut along the muscle, and it's like exposed open to the bone, cut to the very bone of his arm. Squeeze my hand once if it's the barrister. I'll put my hand in his good hand away from the injured shoulder. His hand is wet and hot and sticky with blood as he moves it from his belly, and his belly begins to just kind of pouring this slow oozing puddle beneath of him where he's sitting on the floor in his mail and his clothing. He squeezes your hand once. Faintly. Shit. You hear this crashing sound <laughs> coming from the other side of the room where the door is closed. Oh shit, I, I need to run. I need to get the fuck out of here. You're leaving? I... I... 
I have to. I see. Okay. How much light is in here? Can I get my way out and make my way downstairs? Well, he's in the hallway and he's standing. Uh, he's standing directly across from the uh, doorway to the step to the drawing room where you heard the crashing sound. All right. All right. I'll scream for as loud as I can for guards. Okay. Help! Help! Help me! I'll kind of keep my uh, facing the drawing room and try to back up, making very careful that I don't fall down the stairs or anything very horror movie-ish like that. Okay. <laughs> kind of stammer, staggering back. You all kind of hear this call from upstairs as Lord Arceus kind of confused and turns around up, and he's right in front of the uh, he's right in front of the grandfather clock, and it strikes ten. Bong, bong, bong. There's just. The sound of fireworks out in the back of the gardens as Dom, you, as you, uh, Terwin and Domina are just at the door as this uh, thin, waifish looking uh, guard tosses aside a blue mantle, begins scurrying as fast as she possibly can toward the front door, and she joins the dancer who never had her chance to dance. And they're kind of, they're kind of, they look up toward the hallway and they kind of stop and kind of holding their hands over their mouth as they're clearly not sure what's going on either. And we will stop here for the night. Okay. One of reward points, everybody. Yeah. All right. I was told it could have gone somewhat worse. Yeah. We just got a little started a little late. Everything sort of came into play. A few crit fails might have. You know. Yeah. That makes a difference <laughs> for sure. Yeah. What happens? Hey, this is a this is a fun session. I'm glad we're able to run a little longer too, because I think that interrupting this, where in the middle of yeah, the we would have lost some of the the pace. So we will reconvene next week uh, for Queen of Embers. But before we do that, uh, we must roll the wheel of chaos. So remember, you know how chaos or corruption works, and I will uh, spin it. Here we go. The number tonight for corruption is random player spins. Nick, you spun once. I believe Walter spun once before oh, too. So, Mike, because you're here, you're the spinner. Yeah. That's not so random. <laughs> you're not so random. Six. Six. <laughs> Thank you. That's a corruption value for tonight. Okay. Thank you all for tuning in for Queen of Embers. I got an order, right? We will see you all next Thank week. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for your patronage. Thank yeah. you for watching this on Twitch now. Yeah! It's happening. And, uh, see y'all later. Bye! 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 Is that the Harry Potter? Like, I have no idea what that is. There's a lot of dick jokes tonight. I'm just saying. Yeah, this is going to be the explosive joke.